Uh, so Shalene's settings need to be fixed for her personal microphone. So I'm just going to go ahead and say hi, everyone, and welcome to GameStack um, episode 97 featuring Mr. G. Hey, what's going on? What's How up? you doing? doing and good. Uh, also with us tonight, Vendertron. Hello, hello. And and did Shalene get her? Nope, Shalene didn't get it. I wonder if she's muted on her personal microphone. Yeah. Uh, did you hit the okay. button? And so Shalene is there. She's just working on some audio things. Uh, anyway, I'm going to tell you guys um, th- that Shalene wrote the show notes from her perspective. So I'm going to try to best read through this from her perspective, although that won't really work. Uh, hats, hats, hats. Why is it always just hats? Why does testing? it have like... Testing? Mm-hmm. Am I here? There, there. she is. I'm here! There she is. Goodness. Hello, Hi. friends! Hi, everyone! There is no better way to be good at audio troubleshooting than to experience it firsthand. Well, <laughs> well. True. Hello, friends. Hi. Um, so, welcome to episode 97 of GameStack. <laughs> We're doing it again. Okay. I am Shaleen, and joining me today is that was Rick, who was who was trying to take over, uh, while yeah. I was otherwise otherwise not able to speak. You okay. know, you guys might think that we're actually doing this as some sort of a bit. <laughs> But it actually religiously happens almost every single time. It's yep. been a really long time since I since I've done this run the stream and it has been. And apparently I should have rehearsed or something. Uh that was Vendor. Hi Vendor. Hello. Hi. How you doing, Hi. Buddy? How are you? Like uh, I'm sweater. okay. My my um my audio mixer um caught fire an hour before we went live. So um I'm bringing back the old game stack microphone, the old Yeti microphone. So, do you yeah. remember my old mixer actually melted? Yes, yeah, it literally it was... caught fire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's tradition on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't set a mixer on fire, have you done game stack? Have you done that's yeah, true? Games? <laughs> well, that yes. that was the old one, but uh, the old show that shall not be named. But yeah, I mean, oh, I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> too soon. It wasn't too soon? named. It wasn't too named. Soon. Oh, good. But, um, not soon enough. But uh, I mean, in this little conglomerate of podcasters. Yeah, you have to set at least one mixer on fire. So, Shalene, mm-hmm. it's your turn. Yeah, no, shh, shh, don't say that too loud. Her mixer might hear you. I don't even have a mixer plugged in right now. So, if oh. I do have one, it'll on probably my desk. still catch on so fire. It'll just catch on fire in another flames. part of the house. Yes, it'll Spontaneous just... combustion. Gracious. Uh, so, those are the lovely dulcet tones of Mr. G. Uh, our lovely friend, also known as Hello. Steven. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. How have you been? Dun, 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 dun. I just tap danced for you. Um, good. Uh, I've been. I've been. Gosh, what has been? A lot has happened since last we talked. The world feels like it flipped upside down, <laughs> shook me, and put me back up. And then I was like, I wasn't sure which direction I was turned. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I, if anyone else has that sense of the last year and a half or so, then uh, yeah, we'll be able to talk uh, openly about the crazy world that we've lived in. I'm doing mm-hmm. good. My family good. is good. good. My kids are good. Uh, but wow, what a crazy year and a half that right? has yeah. been and continues to be. And and for our audio <laughs> listeners and, and those listening live, um, if you don't recall, uh, Mr. G is the composer of the introduction music for that Fallout show, uh, so you might recognize his voice from yeah. from there. Co mm-hmm. co composer with co composer co composer bit trash. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, bit trash right. Yes, oh my yes. gosh, he sent me that. I was like, oh, that's so cool. He like mm-hmm. bitted out the version, and I was like, yes, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Well, we are so happy that you came to join us today. Uh, But speaking of that Fallout show, that brings us to the next thing that I just want to briefly mention. For anybody who has not heard our last episode of that Fallout show, um, it has it has arrived at its natural conclusion for now. Uh, We are putting TFS on hiatus. Um, 
we we may bring it back if there's a new game or more content but until then we are going to roll all of our fallout news and uh and gameplay chat here into game stack so this will be your one-stop shop for we just love games uh mm -hmm. for the time being uh, and i think it's going to be a really good thing for us and for you guys to merge that content into this one show i think we're all gonna enjoy it a lot more um also, we want to thank our sponsor, Oak and Crow Coffee. You can visit oakandcrow.com and pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee, our lovely blend. Um, and when you buy a bag of We Just Love Coffee from oakandcrow.com, $2 from your purchase goes to benefit the Children's Miracle Network. Um, yeah. And of course, as always, we ask you to host us on Twitch if you're watching live. And if you're not, tell your friends, share the show on your social media, um, just, just post flyers telling people to listen to GameStack. <laughs> just touch the flyer. Just yes. touch it and you will be transported. Indeed. Indeed. So yeah. please, please help us promote this show. We do have uh, a five-star review. It's not for this podcast though. Oh. Uh, it's actually a, a five-star review for that fallout show. And I missed it last week when I was making the notes for, for that fallout show. And we don't want, we don't want vodka knockers to, um, <laughs> what the knuckers to miss his shout out so um, vendor do you want to read the uh, the five star review i'm um, sure i'd love to read the five star review um let me just pull up the show notes so i can read that why did you not you. have them already up um i was looking at the screen share well, that's true you um, only have one screen right now yeah i'm operating mm -hmm. on, off of this like a pleb <laughs> so <laughs> you're not sponsored by apple um, but, we but we could are sponsored be. By... No, oh, we we're couldn't we're be. open to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we do have a five star review shout out. This one comes from Vodka Knockers, left, uh, who left a TFS review uh, that we actually missed. So we wanted to share it out on GameStack. And they say, We are sorry. And I'm putting no, that's it here. Me. That's oh. me saying oh. that I'm sorry, and I'm putting it here. Okay. That is that is behind the scenes notes that I'm just uh, gonna delete that unnecessary yeah. information that should have never been put there. You read anything else um, on the teleprompter? He says this show. <laughs> I'll never be president. Let's just be. I'll never be. Pre I'll be like. Well, you are. Don't Canadian. read this part. Um, okay. Uh, so. Rick, uh, Vod stop! Vodka Knockers says, uh, this show is exceptional. I've been listening to TFS and GameStack podcasts while at work and cannot get enough of it. The banter and flawless movie quoting from the trio and their guests is exactly the way I am with my friends and just what we all could use about now. It's no wonder they're the number 15 all-time video game podcast in New Zealand. Hey, I didn't know that. Nice. <laughs> and the hilarious antics and discussions constantly have me laughing out loud to the point uh, where I get strange and puzzled looks from my boss and my coworkers. Good. Uh, not sorry that I'm not sorry. The best so far was the note from Mrs. Moleminer in the lunchboxes bit when talking about those events in Fallout 76. Looking forward to many more amazing episodes. P.S. The intro song is also terrific and so catchy. I find myself singing it regularly. Looking forward to many more episodes. Well, <laughs> oops. Yeah. <laughs> About but that. you just just slide into this one, uh, vodka <laughs> noggers, uh, because <laughs> it hasn't gone away. It's still here. It's just turn. It's it's like a butterfly. Yes. I, I do need to clarify that in Twitch, their username is vod underscore knockers, not vodka knockers. It's much oh, different. Oh, much different. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that was not. They probably wasn't. Not it's just about their vods, right? Like, yeah, got it. Their vod underscores the Kanakers. Oh my goodness, yes. you guys! Stop! Mm -hmm. Stop! No, it's actually never. a two and a half men it, reference. If any of you watch Two and a Half Men, but <sighs> it's beside I either haven't here or there. Very okay. Long time. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that five star review. We appreciate it. Um, We're and gonna we get through. We're gonna we get through also this. have a new person in the Discord. Uh, Vendor, do you want to take that as well? Sure. Yeah, we've got some new people. Manny, Manny, Manny Sacks. Manny Sacks. Yeah. Um, How many? And many. Many. <laughs> I swear they're doing this just to mess with us. 
I, there is someone out there creating usernames and joining our Discord just so that we read them out on the air is, and and debate them over several shows like VOD Knockers. What's that? <laughs> what's the word? Like, there's a word for when words say a word, or what? You know what I'm trying to say? Like an anagram? Not an not an anagram. Uh, no. I know. What Onomatopoeia. You're no, well, no, but like, like, all right, vodka knockers. Even though it's vodka knockers, it sounds like a different word, like sofa king. An innuendo? No, no. innuendo is not right. Innuendo is like a backdoor sex joke. Oh gosh, like that. Uh, although it was a Freudian innuendo, but um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so many levels right now. <laughs> but it's no, like, like Bart. Like, what? Like what? Bart and the phone calls to Moe's Tavern. <laughs> Wait, was oh, that exactly, the um, exactly? I'm looking for pep, pepperoni. Yeah, yeah. that's it's, it's the exact. I'm looking for the exact same thing. I'm sure there's a there's a oh website gosh. that describes what that is. So, yeah, a word for yeah. Anyway, also, um, so I'm gonna have to take the lead on this one. Uh, Vendor had you. Vendor had mentioned uh, that he really wanted to talk about a squirrel. That appeared in our Discord, but he's forgotten the squirrel since then. <laughs> yeah, um, it's gone. I don't even remember. I this, don't remember. Okay, this was in oh, the Discord yeah, in the companions. companion section, and uh, the squirrel lives with makeshift hero JKR, and the squirrel's name is Darla. Darla mm -hmm. turned eight. Darla had her eighth birthday, and you can see here in the photo, she's got a little ear of corn oh, and like a, like a little gourd. She has her own cupcake. <laughs> yes, her own it's cupcake. It's probably pumpkin spice because it's October. <laughs> this is, Isn't it cute? Uh, this is um, so cute. this is an old school listener from like way, way back. I'm fairly yep. certain. I just yeah, want to point out. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. want to point out that the reason why I wanted to talk about this is that our Discord community is so cool that we have people that have pet squirrels. That is pretty rad. Yes. Right? Um, and yeah, if like you would like to post help. pictures of your companions, you can do that in the companions channel. Um, it's constantly rolling. Actually, all of our channels are actually really active. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also just yeah. wanted to note that squirrels do not make good pets, but Darla is a rescue animal because she is handicapped. So um, just, just throwing that out there. So um, good on you. You are a hero, makeshift hero. You, you're a, a real hero, not just. I know her one. name is Darla, right? And like, thank you for saving the squirrel. Mm. My heart just melts. What a perfect name for a squirrel. Yes. Darla. So yeah. um, she gets into the trash. We could call her Trash Can Darla. <laughs> so <laughs> if somebody wanted to join there. the Discord to share pictures of their own squirrel, how would they oh. do that? Twenty minutes in. Um, you can do that by scrolling down right below the live stream if you're listening live and clicking on our Discord link. That'll bring you right into the community. If you're listening to the show after the fact on any one of our podcast platforms, uh, you could navigate to twitch.tv slash we just love games and then you'll be able to access the link there or you can send us a message on social media and we'll make sure you get access that way. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have just completed the longest intro in the history of GameStack. <laughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> and now we're going to move on to the <laughs> show. We've got news. We've got gameplay shenanigans. We have stocks. Do we have stocks? We have stocks. We do we have, have stocks. stocks. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. But we're going to start off with the news. How do I? How do I? Where's the news? Where's the news bumper? This just Tonight on the news. <laughs> this is the best show ever rick do you want to uh, talk about the free games for uh, october i do want to talk about the free games for playstation plus games for october you get hell let loose pga tour 2k21 and mortal Kombat x which i believe is a roman numeral for 20 so from october i'm kidding it's 10 from october I was, those are like, available <laughs> no whoa. i'm joking i joke. um there's also treasure there because it's X. Uh, October 5th through November 1st. Now, Hell Let Loose is will be the one that I would go for just because it's kind of a more military, it's a more realistic World War II military sim. And it looks and plays really well. Uh, games with gold for October, you get Aero, uh, Oct all of October. You get Hover from October 16th through November 15th. Castlevania colon Harmony of Despair. 
October 1st to the 15th in Resident Evil Code colon Veronica X. I Is that right? Code colon? Isn't it Resident Evil colon Joseph Code Veronica Tau, X? Joseph Tao put it this way in the notes. I have, oh, I have complete it must be faith correct. in him. Complete he could, faith. He could put the colon after Veronica. <laughs> yes. And we'd be like, yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. Resident Evil Code Veronica X uh, available in the latter half of October. It is Code Veronica X is a great game. Um, it's 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 fun. It's old school like fixed cam. It's cool. Free games with Amazon Prime for October twenty first. Uh, I don't know why it's with this. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I have to click the link. Mm. Mm. Ridiculous, you isn't get, it? Yeah. Yeah, you get Star Wars Squadrons. I highly recommend that game. It's very fantastic. Alien colon Isolation, Ghost Runner, Song of Horror Complete Edition, Red Wings colon Aces of the Sky, Wallace Ampersand Grommets, Grand Adventures, Blue Fire, Tiny Robots Recharged, Whiskey Ampersand Zombies colon The Great Southern Zombie Escape, and Secret Files 3, plus more games and add-ons. So yeah, there's a lot to pick from there. Squadrons is amazing. I would try out Alien Isolation if it's free. Um, and then obviously you need a Wallace and Gromit game in your life because who don't? Lovely. Uh, Twitch Prime has some freebies as well. Um, it look oh, it's the same thing. Okay, yeah, never mind. It's, it's the same. I did not know. Yeah. That is all the freebies for October. You did hmm. a great job, Rick. Thank you. I just just absolutely want to brilliant the job that you did. Uh, Vendor, do you want to tell us a little bit more about our next article? Uh, um yes i do um oh yeah i threw this one in here i don't know if you guys did any any of you guys play dragon quest no nope. no i mean i don't either actually. no I've, I've never even heard of dragon quest but what's the oh dragon yeah. age never mind yeah this square this enix is probably some kind of anime situation i don't know dragon quest square net square enix it's a role-playing game cool are An you being RPG? sarcastic right now no, no I, I don't know anything about this. So, okay. Dragon Quest is a role-playing game um, that has dated back to, like, I think the original was in, was made in 1980-something, 86. Oh, wow. Oh. Like, King's Quest era. Like, like the I'm dawn here. of video games. The dawn of video games. So this is a and, pretty big um, hole in our gaming knowledge, then. Apparently so. Well, yeah. I mean... Um, I about this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the developer, the developer of Dragon Quest, um, uh, was or is um, Square Enix, and um, the composer, the original musical score composer for Dragon Quest, passed away yesterday. Oh. Uh, yeah, composer uh, Kyochi Sukiyama, known for his contribution contributions to the music. Uh, for Dragon Quest died at the age of 90 and um, unfortunately that was from septic shock which uh, probably wasn't um, you know the most comfortable thing to to go through uh, he is recognized by the Japanese government for his artistic and cultural accomplishments Sukiyama earned the order of the rising sun in 2018 and was named person of cultural merit in 2020 um, and is well known for his dragon quest theme, which was the opening music at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics oh, opening brilliant. ceremony. Will we get oh, wow. in trouble if we play a little bit of this music? Do you think? No, go right ahead. Okay. Up to 30 seconds. Oh, this is a trailer. Awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, if you talk over it, yeah, it also counts as commentary. So. This is, so, okay. Um, I guess I like the fire the effect music? here. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a flame. Yeah. Shape of an X and then maybe an I. Oh, is there no ooh, music? X2. I, I, why would this not have the music if it's the? Because uh, that that particular one is actually music. just for the remake, the 2D remake of the game. Okay. Okay. Mm. We'll forget about that. But um, Square, sure it's Square, very good Square Enix Square Enix president and CEO Yasuki Matsada said in a corporate statement, "I would like to take this opportunity to offer my deepest sympathy to Kichi Sugiyama's friends and loved ones. Words could not express the scale of the contribution made." Um, by Mr. Sugiyama from the birth of the Dragon Quest series until now. I remember seeing him conduct the orchestra in a Dragon Quest concert as if it were yesterday. I thank and honor him for his long years of service and the many wonderful pieces of music he has written for our games and other heartfelt prayers 
for the repose of his soul. Um, so I thought that those were some kind battle. words. Okay, that's an ad. And I thought, um, I thought that I would just throw this in there because you know when we lose some, uh, when we lose a member of the gaming community, um, you know that has contributed, um, you know, content in such a way that he undoubtedly have a, had a huge impact on video games um, and video game soundtracks. So, okay, we have the actual music this time. Oh, okay, go. This is from the Tokyo Olympics opening ceremonies. Ah, that's very. It's epic. very heroic and national anthem. -y. It's like a country's national anthem. Yeah, this vibe. absolutely feels like something that should open the Olympics. That's great. I love it. Okay, that's 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, there, I, I, I mean, it goes without saying that um, this composer got into some heat um, promoting far right uh, ideologies and things like that. But we acknowledge him for his great music um, and contributions to the gaming community. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Fender. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about is the fact that, uh, well, frankly, this next bit of news is the reason why we were late going live uh, because Twitch was hacked <laughs> and we all had to reset our stream keys. Oh, and right. then and then Twitch, I think, reset the stream keys again on their own out of an abundance of caution. So mm -hmm. I didn't have the right stream key uh, plugged in. So, yeah, it was a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it was hacked. It was. And uh, according to this article by gamesindustry.biz, uh, it was an anonymous hacker and sensitive data pertaining to several areas of the site and its users has been shared online. It is a 125 gigabyte torrent link that was shared to 4chan. Of course it was 4chan. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and the purpose of the leak was, and I quote, to foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space as their community is a disgusting, toxic cesspool. I mean, um, they're not wrong. They're we not do, wrong. We, we yeah, do love our, say, our little corner. Can I say I'm not corner. upset about this? Yeah. <laughs> we love our little corner of, of this toxic cesspool, though. Just, we do. Just, just saying. Yeah. Well, we sweep the toxic cesspool back to create this our own little... This is the best part of the toxic cesspool yeah. right here. Um. Well, Vendor is gone. I don't know where he went. Uh, I did By the way, Vod Kanakers is in the chat. Oh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Vod Kanakers is here. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> here I, I, and lot. Just it's good to. I just. I just. I turned my head, looked at the chat, and I said, "Oh, hey, look at that." I did dig into this go. just a little smidgen just now to see like how it was hacked because i keep seeing like what was leaked but i didn't see like how the hacker did it tell us appar more apparently it was a server misconfiguration so either aws which is amazon web services or somebody in twitch's it did not set up a server correctly and the hacker was able to find an exploit there hmm. and get in that way and get a whole bunch of data which is Oof. I would say like most hacks are due to bad configurations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. nice. One Congrats. of the most discussed bits of data that was leaked was the payouts that uh, that Twitch mm -hmm. has has paid out to some of the top streamers between August of 2019 and September of Oh, that's going to make some rumbles. Ooh. Yes, I think it's really <laughs> funny that people are, are totally shocked that successful Twitch streamers are successful. Those <laughs> and other news, water is wet. Those <laughs> sub counts are live. They usually have them like at the top of the screen. And uh, you think somebody's got like 50,000 subs and they're they're poor? Like really? Really? No. No. no they're doing fine. Yeah, I know this like the Lord's it was, work. It was a silly thing. <laughs> Mr. G knows. He knows what's I know up. I know it's 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 a it's a hard life, <laughs> but it's it's one of privilege. Also, I recognize my privilege. Also, but but it's hard. 
because you don't want people to feel bad that you're successful. You know, I understand. I, I think I, I get I, it. I, People want ammunition to bring down streamers. That's what mm -hmm. they want to do, right? And and we know how volatile the streaming community can be. Dr. Disrespect for saying a single sentence um, can totally get eviscerated by millions of people. Um, not that I'm opposed to that. I mean, he that. usually had it coming, though. He's a terrible human yeah. being. But um, <laughs> it's just an example. It's just an example of how how volatile Twitch is. Um, and, and I think, yeah, absolutely. They're going to want to try to sell that information to people uh, in some way or form. Because as we know, information is hot commodity these days. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I think is maybe that if you're a successful Twitch streamer, it's not shown, at, or maybe it's not taken as hard work per se. Like somehow they're not deserving of the fame that they get just because all they do is play video games and stream or sit in a hot tub or something. So maybe that's why there's so much ammunition and heat towards someone who's successful mm -hmm. on Twitch, mm -hmm. because honestly, it might just stem from jealousy. I would like uh, to mention well, part of it. you guys, it's part of it. you guys brought up hot tubs and I would like to mention that this has disproved all of those people yes, shouting about how, how the hot tub streamers are taking all the revenue. Yeah, no, they're not. I, the top streamers are, are beardy dudes. Yep. Yeah. Beardy dudes. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there you go. But I, I, I feel like it's, it's an easy target. If you're against quote unquote, the 1%, I, I think it's an easy target is to rich Twitch streamers because it doesn't seem like they're doing a lot and also they're really easy to access and can, can we just can we just them. can we just point out though that it i mean it at the end of the day it's still exploitation right? i wouldn't say, it's not exploitation per se because they're volunteering to do it exploitation is like if they were hosting a show presenting things that are exploited for money they're exploiting themselves i guess in a way maybe i don't know it's it's just I mean I me exploitation is like the time that we peer pressured Rick into doing a show topless. I volunteered for that. <laughs> well, oh we my. didn't actually make what, any money. What off episode that. is that? And uh, episode someone five? find the link. It's please? one of our early game stack <laughs> 44. episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Episode forty four, I think. Um, oh, is it I watch late? it every okay. night before I go to bed. So. <laughs> so are we going to try to boost ratings by doing a hot tub episode where all the hosts are in hot tub? Let's go. <laughs> I've got the oh, COVID-19 COVID pounds oh, going on. God. I'm making this shirt off for anybody. <laughs> oh, my I, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about streamer success on Twitch. They're, okay, so... It goes back to the whole conversation, Rick and Shaleen, that you and I kind of had offline about vanity. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain level vanity, of... Vanity, vanity. All is vanity. There's a certain level of genuineness or gen genuine... Ingenuousness? Ingenuousness. That, That's a clunky that, word. That is lacking in a lot of successful streamers. Disingenuous. Disingenuous. That that, that's what and we're going for. Disingenuous. One of the things that I've... One one of the things that I've experienced time and time again is watching small streamers make it big and tossing everybody aside that helped them get to where they are. Mama Katie um, in chat says authenticity and that's a much better word. Thank you, Mama yes, Katie. Thank you. Yeah. And and so there's something to be said about um how Twitch as a social media platform can twist uh our perceptions and our perspectives about the world around us. Um, and it's one thing that I've always tried to stay grounded in being a content creator on this platform is trying to be as genuine as possible. And I really struggled for a long time in taking donations um, up until I think probably a year or two ago that I really started to take donations. But even then, it wasn't for myself. It was for charities. So the um, bike ride. I, I, really I remember struggled. the bike ride. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna be doing that again soon that once the really snow cool. flies once the snow flies here i'll be back on my bike but yeah i don't know what do you guys think about twitch on principle well i mean the whole thing was the whole thing is vanity i mean to be an entertainer in any sort of capacity you have to have some bit of vanity in you in order to feel like you have what it takes to do mm -hmm. x thing um 
you know, it, it's just. Right. You're you getting know. in front of people. It's like any yeah. performer or musician. There's a, there's a certain level of you one, maybe, maybe there's, there's an art side to it where you, you just want to share your art. Mm -hmm. There's one. And then there's the, you feel that you are good enough to present that to other people. There's possibly the vanity or the ego side of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's, it, that's not inherently bad. No. Although we definitely see abuses of when that, when someone's, when someone is elevated to an extreme, extreme height, uh, and they are then, you know, they're, they're not a, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know what the word is. Uh, I guess they just don't have integrity in some way, you know, where they're, where they're, uh, and I think that's where the issue comes where people have problems with, and this is true of any, yeah. Like, yeah. I've just been listening to a podcast, uh, about the rise and fall of this church called Mars Hill. It was this very oh, influential, yeah, that, very influential a... church in this, I want to say Seattle area. Yeah. Driscoll. Um, right? Yeah. Mark Driscoll. Yeah. And the guy had a strong ego and he really drew a lot of people to him, you know, to his church because of his very strong kind of personality and, and his way he expressed things. And it was kind of the zeitgeist of what was going on and, and it was hip and it was cool and but he was abusive like he was abusive to his staff and and there was a lot of horrible things that happened um as a result of that the the people lifted him up and they didn't want to break what was going on the 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 church had been become really popular and so he because it was everything was going so well and they were getting money and donations they didn't want to pull him out of that even though they recognized people around him sort of recognized there was something wrong if mm. everything was going so good other than the, the fact money that was coming in the money was coming in yeah and yeah. i think that i think that's true in any yeah. area i think that's true mm. in any any industry it's a um, it's a human it's a human phenomenon yeah it's just yeah. inherent yeah and twitch is inherently designed on this on this idea that you were to get in front of a camera and play video games for people it's no different than someone playing professional football on a camera in my opinion it's the it's the same sort of thing and you either develop well i think that the fact you... if, if twitch was not monetized it wouldn't be that's the same it wouldn't exist <laughs> it wouldn't exist i mean that's just the simplicity of it and and um Capitalism. we well it's not just that it's it wouldn't exist due to cost i mean there's upkeep there's hosting there's the traffic in it you know the streaming traffic causes money just like water through a pipe how you have to pay your water bill mm -hmm. and so it's in that vein where if they didn't make money even to break even that they couldn't handle the hosting costs speaking so, speaking of revenue i would just i would just like to say that i hope that whoever got hands on this source code could actually like develop a successful ad blocker that could just block all the ads on Twitch <laughs> because and, I'm really tired of the ads. And um, with our stuff here, like we pay a good chunk of ch coin to keep the podcasts up for everybody. I pay money every single month to keep our bot up. And the only donations we take in are for the coffee and that goes to charity. So, I mean, we, we value integrity here. I mean, that's why we do it. You know, it's why this is still fun. Um, that's not to knock anyone who does this and makes money because we've put hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year into this podcast that we don't get back. So, I mean, I, I totally am completely understanding of not someone that we're complaining. Can... No, no, no. I'm just saying that like, if it's just integrity is not making money, then nobody with integrity would do anything because you could. Yeah, no, integrity isn't not making money. It's it's how you use that money and that influence and that power for, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever it is that you use it for and, and the way in which you use it, you know, like are you using it for good or are you using it for evil? You know, like are yeah. you, you know, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to make a living, you mm -hmm. know, or make money even i just think when it's someone that's making money and i don't know like uh, 
I, I do stream, but I'm not, I, I mean, I can't claim to be like a, I would barely claim to be a streamer, um, more, more musician who streams and plays video games on the side. Like that's something I love to do, but, um, I have no, and I have no power or stream money or anything. There's zero dollars that I've made streaming. Um, but I think that it, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just think it, it just comes down to what are they doing with what they have? How are they using it? Are they bettering people or are they, are they doing things that are like inherently wrong or illegal, you know, like, cause if they're not, I don't know what the, you know, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. And I was curious cause I saw in the chat, they were talking about Pokimane. Is that who it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's one of the, and something happened. And I don't know the, I don't know the backstory for that, but I don't either. She's pretty highly know. criticized. I, I don't remember what she did most recently that was, but she, she tends to be, I don't think she's that bad. I, I think she's okay. You know what I was just thinking? I'll bet you success. I, I would argue that successful Twitch streamers in general are, have more integrity than half or 99% of all million billionaires right like a self-made twitch streamer has more integrity and more honest like they're more pulled you know up by bootstraps than donald trump and his fortunes are not the man but just how he procured his money do you see what i'm saying now? like it's an entrepreneur thing and it's kind of hard to knock someone who just started with because everyone pretty much started at zero for the most part and built their audience i mean there's exceptions obviously but it's, I just kind of thought about that. Like they all kind of started from the ground up. Like Dr. Disrespect kind of started from nothing and built a character regardless of how it's viewed. Pokimane is kind of the same. Yeah. Thing. And you know, he, he did go to medical school for eight years. Right? Oh, wow. He's actually got a, no. okay. So he has a legit, oh, he's no. a legit doctor. I did not no. know. No, I'm, I'm, no, <laughs> no. Fender's like, no, no. no. Dr. Disrespect okay. is not a legitimate uh, physician. That's a joke. That's, was, a joke. Uh, that's funny. And I'm not um, saying yeah, that I, I, I know mean, nothing I mean, about like Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> I don't, don't, I guess I don't watch his show. Um, I just, I just meant that like when you build something from the ground up and you get a lot of money for it, I, I can respect you more than if you inherited money. And then that's how you build your fortune because you didn't yeah. really work for it. Right. You know? And there's an entitlement that comes along with that, which when you run into someone who's extremely entitled, it you want to punch them sometimes punch them right in the face. I'm not very, I'm a very <laughs> nonviolent person. The number of people I've punched in my life is like on one hand, yeah. probably <laughs> maybe one finger. Like I, I'm trying to think of when I like actually this like finger. try no, to no. punch someone. Um, and uh, it's it's funny. It's probably why I play video games is probably so I can punch people um, in video games. <laughs> it's probably all I love Fallout um, because I am not, you know, I'm not yeah. a violent person. By the way, Mama Katie in the chat, and I didn't want to forget this, is the one who co-wrote this whole uh, Songs in the Key of Fork Knife album oh, with no me, kidding. which I know we're getting to eventually. Really cool. cool. Okay. I wanted to give her a huge shout out because Thank she you. actually produced half that we don't even know at this point who did what on the <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, literally that's, like that's awesome we know a little bit like you can hear oh okay the lead vocal is katie or you know you can tell the difference between me and katie's voice but um like we were like literally we had like google drive and we were just like tossing files we were in zoom we're like oh yeah do this part okay yeah set your tempo it was like cooking like crazy chefs who just grab stuff in the kitchen and uh <laughs> Uh, so people with integrity who work hard, like scrapping, um, mama Katie is like, she produces like just random artists that just come to her. She, she does her own music. She streams. Um, she's a gamer. That's kind of, we connected this past year and a half. We, we've actually go way back. She lived in San Diego and, uh, we were a part of this thing called February album writing month. Um, and so we like in 2009, I think, and then we did live shows uh, through February album writing month. And then just over the pandemic, we started playing Fortnite together. She's a big Call of Duty. She destroys everyone I know in Call of Duty. She loves <laughs> laughing as guys curse at her because she's destroyed them. It's one of the pleasures of her life is ruining teenage boys lives 
because she's better than them. It's pretty great. <laughs> nice. I think I got all that information. She did. So anyway, yeah, you should all follow Mama Katie. Uh, yeah. And she has all kinds of, of awesome that content. That is Mama underscore Katie for our audience. Mama box. underscore Katie. Yeah. And, and, and she's the big force behind the album. I'm sorry. I know we've, I, we know we've been so off rails tonight. <laughs> um, like, we love uh, it. We love it. This is the oh, best. good. I'm so glad. That's exactly. This is. It. What are you talking about? This is how. I mean, we this do is the show. on rails. This is actually <laughs> on rails. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 Off rails would. It, off rails would be like if we like Followed got an hour, exactly. hour show and just got up and notes, left. You know what I mean? We just got up and left. We just yeah. left. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I, I do that often. But nudity um, on stream doesn't even qualify as off rails anymore. That's moral moral of the story here, boys and girls, go and change your Twitch password <laughs> and your stream key um, if you are a content creator on Twitch. Uh, yeah. And um, maybe also um, consider removing your credit card information from your account. Enable two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. And enable two-factor authentication. As annoying as it is, it will save you a lot of grief in the Indeed. long run. I use the Google Authenticator app. It works very nicely. Um, if you're wondering about good ways to store passwords and create new ones, you can create a random password generated through Google, or you can get LastPass on your phone, which stores awesome. stores all of your intricate and very complicated, annoying passwords. So check that out. Um, yes. All the intimates. Mm -hmm. What else you got, Shalene, on the docket? Well, it's more, the next thing is more about what I don't got, and that's a PS5, <laughs> and I'm never going to get one. You guys, never. Wait. I'm never oh, going to get no. one. This Game Informer article says that the chip shortage that is affecting console supplies will last into 2022. Um, it's been, mm -hmm. it's been almost a year since the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S uh, were released, and it's still super hard to get one. I I just like I, I follow a bunch of accounts on Twitter and I have alerts turned on and I get the messages when when like, hey, you know, stock is live at GameStop. And uh, I, I, I just I can never get one. <laughs> I can never get one. I've maybe had I it so get, many times. Maybe I can get one and send it to you, Shalene. Okay. okay. I, I have money set aside, cash money, which of course is useless for how you probably have to buy it in the amount of time you have to buy it. But I have cash money because I have been waiting. I've really wanted to get one, but I haven't been trying as hard as like someone who's got all the, you know, uh -oh. different needs and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite possible that, that my laptop might just die. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> if it catches on fire, we see flames coming around the edge of the camera. No, nope, we have power. Yeah. We have power. Okay. Lovely. We've got the power. Uh, recently, AMD CEO Lisa Su told CNBC that the component supply uh, for even the beginning of 2022 was likely tight. Um, the shortage has been caused by an increase in demand since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, and people are, are transitioning to an at-home workplace, have been for the last, like, two years now. And uh, these, uh, the parts that manufacturers use to build things like laptops and desktop computers, they, they were, you know, purchased. They, they've been used. The demand is high. And uh, AMD is still struggling to catch up to the demand. So uh, the pandemic, of course, also led to some increases in, in video game sales. So products like the PlayStation, the Xbox, and graphics cards for PC have been in higher demand than ever. So, uh, you know, I was at the mini dealership the other day getting my car serviced um, and I was talking to the sales guy and he said, you know, it's really bad. He said, we have 70 Beamers on the lot. And he's like, we're not getting any more cars in and we're not selling any cars. And he said, I don't know if we're going to get any more cars. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, no microchips. Yes, yes. The chips shortage is a problem for automobiles as well. Uh, I work at a city hall and uh, we ordered a new cop car months ago. And uh, and they, they just can't provide it because. Oh, my gosh. Chips. Yeah, the graphics cards. Like, I remember I was going to upgrade my PC. I'm like, well, I'm home. I've been saving and there's like 
Nothing. And on top of that, on top of the graphics cards, I went to Ikea and I tried to get lids for some containers. And you know what, kids? No more lids. <laughs> wow. There's no lids. And I'm not even joking about that, which is makes it funnier, I guess, or sadder. They have the there were no lids. They you said, have blown the lid, lid off of this shortage situation. There is a lid. Thank you. <laughs> a lid shortage. You know, maybe that's why I was... That's maybe that's why the only place in Canada that had my audio mixer replacement was in Prince Edward Island. Yeah. Like the the Mackie FS the version three FSB. is like sold out everywhere. See 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 everyone laughs when I struggle for many, many years finding old, old tube driven equipment, but y'all aren't, I'm not laughing now because my stuff is all fine and working and dandy and I don't have any shortage. Hey, remember that time that you spent $200 for a screw from Greece? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I did. Mm -hmm. And it's been fantastic working. It was the best screw I ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> Probably your most expensive screw. It was. Well, I'm married. <laughs> so you, new world is popular huh new world? new world amazon's oh, new mmo i can't yeah. wait to talk about new world <laughs> new world and, uh, you're such a sucker i was yeah i you're was gonna bring this conversation sucker. because um me and vendor were having a conversation where he's like hey new world and i'm like yeah i was like it's pvp focused and and I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you'd like it. And it really doesn't look like anything I'd like. And he's like, yeah, I thought so. And that was kind of it. And then, uh, like a week later, I'm like, guys, I really love new world. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about it. I've heard a lot about it, but I haven't, I don't really know much. Yeah. So, okay. Shalene, tell us, tell us the, yeah, yeah um, the I'll news the about new segment. world is, is basically just that, um, it's got over 900,000 concurrent players on Steam, which is, mm -hmm. is pretty big. That's a lot of players. Mm -hmm. uh, on day one, it had 700,000 users at the same time. So that's, that's pretty high. That's, uh, yeah. that's yeah. a lot of concurrent users. So I just wanted to throw that out there in particular because Rick has been, has been playing it. So <laughs> yeah, I'd like to yeah. show you that, uh, that you're not mm -hmm. alone in thinking mm -hmm. that. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't, I can't actually play with my wife on on the server she's on because it's full constantly. So I had to start on a different server. But uh, I'll, yeah. I'll talk more about that. Anyway. Some of the it's... people that I that I follow on Twitter who were trying to play New World were waiting in queues for just hours to get in yeah. on that first day. When when Amazon launched the game, they only had like I don't know. Let's, I, it wasn't this many, but let's just say they only had like 20 servers. And within like two weeks or so, they've upped it to like 80. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they've, they've expanded. And, and what a lot of people were trying to do at the beginning were they were trying to get on servers where popular streamers had their companies. I'll explain what a company is, but they were all trying to join those companies and then play with those streamers. So queue times for those popular servers were just... Ridiculous. I've never had to wait to get on my particular server. Lovely. Yeah. What what is this game though? It's a it's a, it's a whole new world. Shining oh. shimmery. Um so basically what the game is, it's an MMO um that is PvP focused mechanics mixed with PvE and they've done a pretty good job mm. because you can just turn off PvP and never do it. You don't have to. Doesn't like Fallout 76. Thing. Better. Uh, um, you so don't have to pay for it? A, no. Do you have to mm. pay for PvP free? Mm. You hit a button. You hit the U button. <laughs> so it should be. And um, it's, uh, you know, so that that's kind of it. It's gathering. Um, I don't know how to say resource management it's it's no it's not even really resource management there's a lot of gathering and crafting involved it's pretty in depth um you can you can play as anything you don't pick a class you just level up whatever you're using so like if you want to play as a bow and arrow dude you can use bow and arrow and then you're like i'm gonna go to sword and then you just switch over and start using sword and you level up the sword um and that's sort of like skyrim yes it's very I much like skyrim 
Skyrim reminds me of the yeah. Skyrim thing. Is it so? It's it's a medieval fantasy. Yes, I would say, uh, yeah, medieval fantasy gunpowder because you can use muskets. And what I really like about it is that it's not like, it's not like Guild Wars where you click a button and it kind of auto attacks. It's more the the melee is more like ESO in the sense that you have to do the. There are special moves that you can do, but you have to pay attention to like how they're attacking block you know blocking is timing blocks is kind of a thing uh muskets you actually have to aim it's not just like a lock-on thing um you have to actually aim the bullet uh which is why i really like the musket side of things um but the general thing is you've shipwrecked on this magical island and other people have been shipwrecked there too so they've all started these communities and there's a bunch of different little like uh provinces around and there are three factions that fight for control of these provinces. The factions are made up of actual players. And inside of the factions, there's companies that are built of other players. So the three factions are Syndicate, Marauders, and Covenant. They all have their own little kind of traits. And they all fight back and forth for these provinces. Um, I joined up with the Somebody's Company, which is just like 36 of us in one company. With our, We have like a hierarchy of like governors and settlers and all kinds of different things and um so that's kind of it that's like the pvp mechanics you take a province and then one you know one other faction does pvp missions inside of a, uh, somebody else's controlled province and then from there they influence and then they can declare war and you tr that's how provinces change hands you just fight in each other's provinces declare war eventually and then you can take it over so if you're a, if you're an mmo player like because i didn't play i never really played like the big massive one like uh world of warcraft mm -hmm. or or is eso is that the the skyrim on the eso is the elder scrolls online okay so i didn't do those so like but this if you do those this is like you just pop right into this and you, yeah, you'd pop right into this. But even still, if you just kind of jumped into it, it wouldn't be that difficult of a learning curve, in my opinion, because it's it's not as complicated as ESO, in my opinion. It's really not. The crafting is is kind of in-depth. Like, to make certain foods, like, you literally have to make flour <laughs> and then make butter and then put those things together. To, like, for cooking, like you know? Yeah, yeah it, it is a bit like that. I mean, there's a lot of like I said, resource, ga resource gathering and, and stuff. But the way there is an overarching story as well, you land on this island and you have to try to figure out the mysteries of this magical island, why there's this corruption that's um, taking over the island um, and, and things of that nature. So there is like a main through storyline, um, but it's also focused on PVP. And like I said, all you have to do is just while you're in a town, you hit the U button and it turns off PVP and no one can hurt you. The only thing that can hurt you is just other, you know, PVE. That's things. really so, cool. That's yeah, you can just that go is out and mine. Solo mission, obviously. There's like a mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then you can go into a town and hit the U button and you're up for PVP and you walk out and you could die. <laughs> so, so if you PVP someone, do you like lose everything? Okay, so this is a the last game that was like a multiplayer, besides I've been playing Fortnite like a crazy person, um, was Fallout 76. Yeah. And I, there was a lot of contra. I remember because it was like, it kind of evolved as the game was like, you know, coming out. It's like, okay, PvP, here's how PvP is going to work. You can, you you know, you can sort of tap out, you know, by not engaging. And, yeah. and but, well, so they've, they've set this up so it's a lot easier, obviously, to drop in and out and... Mm -hmm. it, well, the thing with Fallout 76 is they always had the slap mechanic where you would shoot someone and it would ping them. And you could, there were ways where you could actually kill people who didn't accept PvP. It wasn't like a flag on, flag off sort of thing. Um, and, and you, you don't lose them. anything. Yeah, you don't lose anything with this. Uh, I've, no. I died a bunch of times in PvP. And the only thing that you have to do is you, if you don't make a camp near where you're fighting, you have to respawn at uh one of the settlements which is sometimes pretty far away from where you died so you just have to hoof it back to where you're fighting so if you're trying to keep uh, a point of interest 
from another faction taking it over and you die and you didn't make a camp near there, you'd have to like spend a few minutes running back. And in that time it could, you know, the battle could end or swing towards a way that you don't want. Um, but I'll talk more about that because I didn't play PVP until last night. And I have some real, it, it was such an epic. Yeah. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. So, Lee, but that's the gist excited. of new world. Sorry. Did we, and that was a, uh... Part of our not off the rails, on the rails, jump to a different <laughs> section, go forward, because because the host asked a question. The, the guest asked a question that was not on the I'm so sorry. No, no, no. wonderful, <laughs> and we love it. I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> we were not going to pay New World any time of day because none of us were interested in it until I bought it mm -hmm. <laughs> played it, so. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that about. See, I want to try Sea of Thieves just because <gasps> of you guys. Sea of Thieves. Play, I've never come tried sail it. with if us. You try Sea of Thieves. I want to be on that boat when you oh do. Oh my gosh. Okay, I really want to upgrade. Uh, like I said, I have money to upgrade my computer, but I haven't. I don't know. I I want to get a new new machine, and I feel like I could if I just bought a pre. There's like pre-made ones that are just kind of like, too. Mm -hmm. They're pretty overpriced, but like at this point, I don't know. The, the the cost of buying it versus waiting for like the perfect dr price drop feels like it might be never i don't know mm -hmm. so yeah because i wanted to have like a more of a gaming machine to to play but any yeah. yeah i'd love to try that yeah so that's on my that's on my list it's on my bucket list <laughs> it is a great game I my gaming bucket so list. good so good uh, there are many buckets in Sea of Thieves, just so you know. Lots of Ooh, buckets. Yeah. There are. Big bucket game. Uh, so our, our next news story sort of falls under um, a category we haven't really had for a while. Zany Kotaku news. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> some car thieves were arrested for stealing cars. And they were using an electronic device uh, that would bypass security systems as well as start the engine. Uh, we're talking about it here on this video game podcast because they had it disguised as a Game Boy. They, they put it in a, a Game what? Boy shell. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's brilliant. Um, yes. According to the BBC, this device is worth about 27000 US dollars. And no. it can bypass a car security system and start the engine, allowing the thieves to drive off in the stolen vehicle. And uh, <laughs> they got uh, one of those uh, Supreme Game Boy cases that you can find, like the bootleg Game Boy case that has a bunch of games preloaded on it. Hello, that's the hype train. The hype train. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, yeah, um, they had they had this car theft device concealed in the Game Boy <laughs> shell. And they were caught after stealing a Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, they were captured what? on the CCTV. And Why wouldn't you steal like a Lexus them. or something? Yes, the oh Game my Boy God. was hidden in a secret compartment of the car. And there was also footage on one of the thieves' caught. phones showing the device in action, complete with commentary. Oh. Um, <laughs> People are so stupid. They were doing like a tutorial for, yes! to sell it. <laughs> they were doing um, they were doing car thief tutorials. D Detective oh Inspector God. Vicky Vesey from the West Yorkshire Police told the BBC the utter disregard they had for the victims, <laughs> whose hard-earned vehicles were whisked away in seconds, is totally apparent from the flippant tone heard on the video footage we recovered from one of their phones. <laughs> so, so stupid. Yeah, I just wow. I thought that was Good, really though. really interesting. Good they were caught. Smooth, real smooth. Speaking of stealing cars, um, Grand <laughs> Theft Auto, nice. Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remaster is is an official thing that's going to happen. It's been announced. Uh, so the definitive edition will contain Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. And Ooh. these remastered games will be released for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC later this year. So That's remember, awesome. Do you remember all of the ranting I did on about remakes? Mm -hmm. I'm taking it all back. You're going to buy this one. I am totally mm -hmm. gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna buy it after it comes out, 
Yes, for sure, for sure. And they fix things, but I just want to play Vice City again. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to drive what? a taxi cab yeah. and sing "Flock of Seagulls." Okay. I like San Vice, Andreas. I've never played Vice, Vice City. Vice City was the most iconic one. Vice City in my was the opinion. best. The pink shirt. Yeah, pink, just oh, the yeah, I played some of the three. The guy with the cigar and the mansion. Did you have the mansion, Rick? I had the yeah. mansion. Oh yeah. I mean, the whole thing was so great. So good. You, 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 candy sucks. I mean, it was just the whole. <sighs> and the and the radio commercials. Um, <laughs> they had this one for taxidermy, but it was like for grandparents. So it was like taxidermy. You could taxidermy anything now. Coming soon. Grandparents forever. <laughs> so oh like, my goodness gracious. So good. They had a lot of fun with the, yeah, all did. the different areas of creation in that, obviously. It's brilliant. Like, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. wow. The reason I liked it better than San Andreas because San Andreas was like that, like you could do so much, mm -hmm. but like Vice City was so much good packed into like Oops. a little little morsel, yeah, yeah. And it just yeah. it was just like, boom, it was all right there. And just again that the '80s soundtrack, Miami was just like, mm -hmm. mm, great, so good. I can't. I, Jeff's I can't. kiss says Vod Knockers. Yeah, I can't believe I'm gonna buy it. That's great. It's I okay. mean, I'm it's gonna okay. put it on my wish list. But, you know. Yeah, I'll probably buy it and then not play it because no, that's what I do. No. <laughs> you don't play video games. You just act No, I like just buy do. them. I collect them. I, I don't actually play them. <laughs> Someone has to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I may as well just be investing in stocks. Hey, stocks now. Who wants to read GameStock this time? Rick, you Rick, want to read it? Rick right, does. I got, yes, I got this. <laughs> All right, first we've got Sony up by a dollar forty-one, closing out one hundred and seven dollars and forty-nine cents. We have Microsoft moving no fast, and that closed at two hundred ninety-four dollars and eighty-five cents. Nintendo is down by twenty-nine cents, closing at fifty-six dollars and thirty-six cents. Take two is up by uh, two two bucks ninety-two. Yeah, that's right. And uh, that closed at $173.69. Nice cents. Activision is up by $0.10, cent, uh, closing it at $67.10. Hmm. Ubisoft is up by a nickel. Don't know how, because of that stupid Ghost Recon trailer they put out of a game that nobody wanted. And they wow. closed at $11.20. EA is up by two forty, dollars closing out at $139.99. And $0.10 cent is up by $0.55. Cent. Closing at sixty three dollars and nineteen cent. You just hope for the week where it's ten cent is up by ten cent, and that must have I happened really too. at some point. But I don't, I don't think it's happened on the show. Ubisoft should just go down because they need to stop making games nobody wants. That's what they need to do. Lovely. Anyway, that was Game Stocks. Thank you, Rick. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up is Game Science, which is is Vendor's baby. And I don't have the Game Science bumper because we didn't have that segment the last time that I streamed a game stack. Yeah. So like, boop, 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 um, I wanted to talk about this article that I saw on social media the other day. I thought it was really cool. Um, this study was done looking at post-traumatic stress disorder and how uh, video games can alleviate flashbacks. And so uh, behavioral intervention um, like computer games uh, could actually help people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, the, the research team at, um, oh, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, University Bosham in Sweden uh, did a study of 20 inpatients with PTSD and uh, they treated him by exposing them to playing Tetris and then uh, measured the number of flashbacks that they had uh, for, for that stressful uh, event. So Professor Heinrich Kessler and Dr. Aram uh, Kayanen from the Department of Psychosomatic Medicine and Psychotherapy at LWL University uh, reported that the results together um, did show an improvement for individuals experiencing post-traumatic stress who were exposed to playing Tetris. And so 
Um, about 10 years ago, the team found out that the computer game Tetris can suppress flashbacks caused by horror films in healthy people when they played shortly after watching the film. In the current study, the research team tested whether or not this effect could also help patients with PTSD, uh, for whom the cause of stressful memories um, mostly dated back years ago, right? So... So they took 20 people with P complex PTSD who were hospitalized and for six to eight weeks, uh, they exposed them to regular therapy. And then in addition, a, um, they also underwent special intervention and, um, where they wrote one of their, their stressful memories down on paper and then tore up the paper without talking about the content and then played Tetris on a tablet for 25 minutes. The patients always stated several different flashbacks, um, such as experience of violence in different situations and the occurrence of which they recorded in a diary over several weeks. And they even targeted the content of a specific flashback for each intervention that they took uh, place from week to week. And so um, basically what happened was Whenever a patient consciously remembered the content of a flashback, the associated memory became temporarily uh, interrupted and they were able to weaken that memory through the exposure of playing Tetris. And so in the study, the researchers say that the, their intervention um, was supervised and they had all their checks and balances in place and that their hope is, from the results that they found from this latest study that uh, they'll be able to derive a new treatment for people uh, who could perform on their own at home to help them cope with post-traumatic stress disorder rather than uh, having the need for being hospitalized, which, as you know, could come with its own traumatic experiences in and of itself. So the intervention itself um, doesn't necessarily replace complex traumatic th or trauma therapy, they said, but it can alleviate some central nervous or central symptoms and flashbacks associated with uh, the disorder. So I thought that was kind of cool to share. Cool. <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? Like, it's I really love, neat. Really, I love really to neat. see how video games are being used for mental health in more ways than we ever could imagine. Like on this show, we have talked about several times how video games are used for anxiety and uh, conditions like autism and speech pathology and things like that, but also for training for surgical teams and uh, military and things like that. Uh, yeah. But I never, never, never have I seen a study done that looked at treatment for post-traumatic stress in this way. So I thought it would be really cool to share on the show. That's so cool. I was, so when we talked about this earlier before the show started, there's a game that I played over the pandemic called Tetroid 3. It's on Cool Math Games. It's a it's an HTML5 game and it is a Tetris like game, but I find it to be much less stressful than Tetris because there's not a constant falling. There's not a, you're not dealing with a constant falling object. What what you're doing is you have the three pieces and you can take as much time as you want to place the pieces. Um, and uh, humble brag, I believe I am the world record holder uh, in Tetroid oh, that 3. that has volume. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah. The game has sound. Sorry. Uh, She's checked out. She's playing the game. So I wanted to throw it out to uh, to your to the viewers here. I challenge you, viewers. I, <laughs> that's that's all I got for my like really aggressive challenge voice. Don't say um, that. <laughs> Don't say we have some very talented we game do. players in oh, our community I know that I will probably be dethroned. It is quite possible I that they could dethrone you. I think this calls for a revival of the hashtag GameStack Challenge. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. oh I thought yes. you were going to go for the, the, what was the scoreboard thing? That the we were games oh, the in Fallout. Yeah, yeah the Pitboard. I love, that was so much fun. I love those. Fun. I tried um, one of those and I did not succeed. Yeah. <laughs> that was not on the top of the leaderboard. If you if you can beat Mr. G, play play Tetroid Three on CoolMathGames.org.com. dot dot com. I would put it in the chat. It's in my. Cool I put it in the chat games. if you want to throw it. Dot com. Yeah. Tetroid Three. 
Um, if you just see, go there and search Tetroid your 3. Best yeah. time is and post that on Twitter with the hashtag GameStack Challenge or post it in our in our Discord server and we'll see if we can dethrone Miss, Mr. G. Take me down. As, Take as me down to Paradise player. City where the grass yes. is green. The girls are pretty. Yeah. Won't you please? You went with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah so um and and i was thinking about that and fallout for me actually i i had like like lit panic attacks like i had like i thought i was having a heart attack i discovered later they were panic attacks which was mm. so much fun sarcasm what? not yeah. yeah in 2000 i want to say 2008 2009 i was doing a master's i had young children my wife was doing her masters we were doing all of, it was crazy town and working full-time and i was in like a band and doing a bunch of stuff and i was it was dumb i was doing too many things um so i had a panic attack and then i needed to just not do everything and so i started playing fallout 3. that's where i got into fallout like it was right around that time someone said it oh yeah saved you the game of the it's fallout 3 literally saved me from a heart attack i it definitely helped me a lot and i just immersed myself in it and loved mm -hmm. as i love that game and a lot of it came from slowing down and doing something that i enjoyed and not pressuring myself to do all the things and it was it was awesome so fallout 3 helped me with my it, it heals anxiety guys i just start playing it now and your anxiety will be cured so, so you you walk through Springvale School and you're like, see that pile of dead kids skeletons? Calms me. Calms me. Yeah. <laughs> Just, it's not <laughs> like that, Rick. Okay, with a calm. <laughs> we talked about the thing of love. <laughs> I have a Fallout album, by the way. Yes, uh, you do. Songs in the key of Fallout. That I wasn't going to tie it in, but Mama Katie is push forcefully. She's making <laughs> me do this. Well, well, why don't we why don't we use this opportunity to segue into you? So yes. we do have this oh, awesome segment. We do have this awesome segment on our show called Streamer Spotlight. And as I understand it, you are a Twitch streamer um, and yeah. periodically live streaming uh, either music or Fortnite or some other video game. And uh, I do enjoy popping into your streams. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about your channel? Uh, my channel which you can find at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. G Wiz, M-R-G-E-E-W-H-I-Z, um, is uh, right now it's mainly me with a couple of friends playing Fortnite. So um, I, d during the pandemic, I actually like did animation. I like walked through the process of how to animate using this program called Pivot. Um, if, if, if I had more time, I'd probably do a lot more of that. I, I love it. That's what I do with my students. So I was doing it as a way to connect with my students. That's why I even started streaming. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stream because a lot of my kids are into Twitch and I should try it. And um, and so I do I do Twitch. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So I've been using it as a way to just kind of connect with people online and, and to share what I'm doing and sometimes... And I was streaming for a long time doing Fallout, but then I was getting, it was almost stressful because I felt like I had to like stream to play and sort of like, mm -hmm. I did that with Fallout 4 and I, I wasn't enjoying it as much. Like <laughs> I wasn't enjoying the game because mm -hmm. I I was feeling a little bit of like, oh my gosh, I have to, you have to keep be track on. of my stream and I have yeah. to be on and like interact with people and, um, and so I, I decided to stop. I also got the, I also enjoy the, the wonderful love of uh, some extreme haters that I uh, ran into when I released my, my Minecraft album, like literal threat to murder my children. Uh, it was awesome. And um that's, and not that, awesome at all it was, was terrifying say, that's, that's not as fun as, no. as the that part was not fun because uh so i i had a for the minecraft album i did a kickstarter and for the kickstarter i i made like this it was like this cheesy commercial like intentionally pretty cheesy like 
I was trying to do something like Tom Waits. I don't, Tom Waits did this promo thing for one of his <laughs> albums where he did like a fake press conference. And so like, that was sort of like, my That's idea was like kind of rip off Tom Waits, but like, like che I was cheesier. I was just being like, Hey, da, 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 da. Yes. And it was, it was dumb, admittedly dumb. I mean, the album was songs about like random things in a video game, you know? So I was aware, self-aware of that, but the guy that, I don't know, this guy, I won't even say his name, but he did a thing about Kickstarters that he hated and in the Kickstarter, like just talked about like smashing his, you know, smashing his kids heads in with a ball peen hammer. And I can't, I still, like he got that specific. He got very specific. He plays Fallout. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna say might. like it's like <laughs> with a, like a number two pen, you know, might. like you know. Yeah, he might. And and I was, uh, I mean, I was horrified. And then I re I reached out to a few people like, how should I deal with this? I actually reached out to one of the guys that uh, he was when I was doing my Fallout stuff. Um, he uh, he was like a private investigator, like secure former, like he did like you know, almost like a mercenary for hire kind of stuff. Like he like sort of said, Hey, uh, let me know if I can like look into this for you, you know? And I'm like, please do please, you know, tell me what you know about this guy. And he like looked into it and, but it was terrifying. Yeah. Um, and, and so like that kind of soured me to like streaming and like being in front of people for a while. Well, yeah, but that would do it. That would do it. Would. it. And, and I realized that like, I'm as a white guy, have very, have very, experienced very little pushback for things that I've done. And I realized like, as I started talking with more people and like, honestly, in the pandemic, coming into the pandemic and like having to really like examine, having time to examine my life, having the privilege of having a job where I had time to be home during the pandemic and examine my life and, and uh, like, look at things like, what does privilege mean? What does it mean to have privilege and what does you know what is black lives matter all about like why does that matter for me you know like why should i care about that you know and i did care about it but i didn't um and i would always have considered myself i'm not a racist you know that's what i would that's how i would say it and then looking into my life and going oh wow I've, there's a lot of things that like people deal with like uh, there's this band called the Double Clicks. Love them. Found them years ago when I started doing the Minecraft album, and the hate and the crap they get on a on the daily basis uh, for being uh, like uh, you know um, non-binary or trans or queer is so much more than I have ever experienced in my entire life. Like you know, and and, and I there's a lot of things that I just took for granted, you know, as again, as like a white male guy in the United States, uh, things that I never had to deal with that I would never had, um, put on me, you know? Mm -hmm. So like I experienced this little slice of like horror from this guy that's threatening to like basic encouraging people to smash my kids heads in. He didn't like, I'm not going to show you the video, but it, it it was really scary, you know, but in the grand scheme of things, I've just muted everyone that like posted anything and I put some keywords in YouTube and I don't even go and look at it anymore. It doesn't, you know, the internet I just, is I've very, moved on yeah. and I didn't engage this guy at all because I'm sure that's what he probably wanted is me to yeah. post something and then make it into a thing. Um, but see, I, yeah, I was going to say, see, when you said like who were messing with you, I thought it was going to be something silly, like, you know, no. I experienced in the past where like someone photoshopped my face on porn, you know, <laughs> and I got a giggle out of it. You're like, no, they threatened my kids. I'm like, oh, that's remember that kids. time? Remember that time we got our faces cropped onto penis heads? Oh, it was great. <laughs> I, I loved it. Actually, I, I think I was coming out of a butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, 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 got the, 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 the worst end of that. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, we mic. got, we got trolled pretty good, but it was amazing. I, I was, you know. I loved that, but it, we never it faced any sort of stuff. people that are like fans or was it like, or you don't even know. It was a, it was a, it was a yeah. straight up troll. Yeah. And, and this was back in the TFS days or uh, no, the uh, FOTR days where they would take over our hashtags and then like 
make a bunch of like fake accounts that looked like our name but weren't mm -hmm. and um, cool. a lot of two girls one cup screenshots i think you know flourished around there and i <laughs> thought it was funny because i realized that was a badge of like we've made it in the internet world to where an internet trolls taken that right sort of level of you know interest <laughs> um but i did not realize i mean i can't believe you got that sort of backlash from yeah and it was from the it was mostly from the kickstarter that like really yeah. set this guy off and and that was kind of his shtick um was sort of like uh you know just kind of like going off on these small kind of small independent people who want, sort of thing. didn't have resources to fight back because he had a, like a he has a very well i don't know if he does now i don't but he had a pretty large following of people that mm. would buy this random garbage that he would make and obviously enough that he could maybe make a living i don't know he didn't look like he was doing super well in the videos i i i, <laughs> I don't know his mental state he might just it might be a shtick it might be he's a little yeah unstable i don't know i didn't want to encourage his attention to me to you mm -hmm. know um or rather he just drift off to a, another person Sunset, yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes i wish i could do that like you know like uh i wish i could do something and like kind of engage like engage them i like to engage people that i disagree with that that have a problem i've seen that modeled um by sarah silverman i don't know if you're familiar with her oh yeah yeah uh, she's school of rock she's like the 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 girlfriend it's like the trouble but uh, i've been listening to her podcast um uh, the sarah, sarah silverman podcast or the sarah silverman show or whatever mm -hmm. so good and she talks about this interaction with like this neo-nazi kid that like this young man that posted on her page and was just like vitriol like just hate and just saying the gnarliest nastiest things and she sort of went to his page and instead of like trying to like cancel him and have all her followers like dogpile and destroy him she went to his page and sort of said hey what's going on you know sounds like you've got some tough things going on in your life and she just opened this communication with him and oh my god makes me cry just like <laughs> transformed this guy's life like just like people donated he was like down and out he was there was like a health issues and like i I, I do remember hearing about that yeah. yeah because she like reached out in love to this guy like instead of like going back the same way he came at her um it changed his life probably the trajectory of his life Cause that, I mean, that life is, is not a healthy lifestyle. I mean, that hate, like living in There's that. a hate. lot of angry people. Oh my God. And, and you experience a lot of that in the online environment because yeah. a lot of people who are in an online environment are very antisocial. It's also yeah. very shut it's in. It's also easy to be they angry are. when you can be anonymous. When you can hide yes. behind it, yeah. a wall. And it's so and hard and you want to, and it, it's hard for me because I want to, I simultaneously want to like n ignore that because I know that there's some things you just, you can't engage it because mm -hmm. that's really all they want is the engagement. And then there's also, there's me, like, I want to engage people. I really want to bridge like, like that gap, you know, like I think the only hope for humans, our country, the world, is uh, it feels super cheesy to say it but the older i get the more i believe it's true like that all you need is love um the beatles you know and mm -hmm. and i think that's a really huge truth that though feels though that it kind of feels cliche um i think that's what truly changes people i don't think fear changes people fear Fear controls people. It can control you, right? And I think fear is used. I don't know. Maybe fear can. I'm sure it can change like pathways in your brain and make you behave in certain manners. But I think, I think love does something that those other things can't do. Um, and that is, for me, uh, like a really important. It's really important. You know, it's like something that like just move. It probably is a big part of what I 
want to be about you know even though i like write ridiculous songs about shooting people in the face in a video game um i with love with love with love <laughs> i say so, things so, like that so, in my so, class all the time and i'll say something like oh man i two pumped that guy uh because i'm talking about fortnite with a kid with love i was <laughs> with love yeah. we want to beat the other school with love um but so I, your <laughs> so your channel to go to go back to your channel but, it's so it's it's nice to see you streaming again so you've you've sort of moved past that and you're yeah you're I'm, making I'm, your debut once again yeah i'm 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 streaming i'm more comfortable with it i'm i think i wasn't totally comfortable being i was like i feel like i was three different people or four different people you know i'm mr g i'm Mr. G, the nerd rock guy. I'm Stephen Wesley Giles, the serious, spiritual, deep thought singer songwriter. I'm uh, the lead, you know, I'm like very much kind of separate compartments. And I think something coming out of that 2008, 2009 panic attack um, uh, was therapy, counseling, uh, different groups talking with people becoming much more open about just talking about stuff like mm -hmm. stuff that was embarrassing or humiliating or shameful. Um, and the more I did that, the more I could talk with anybody about almost anything. Um, and uh, like, uh, that, and for me, I'm a people person. I like, I'm a, also a people pleaser, which I don't think is a positive thing. I think I want, I want people to like me as many people do. Um, but I'm not worried about making people like me. And I think that the more I'm genuinely myself, people are going to like me because that's who I am as opposed to me being like, here's my Mr. G persona. Here's my, uh, serious songwriter. I am all those things. I contain multitudes, uh, <laughs> as, do, as do we all, as are all people, as are even Donald Trump, who I have very none respect for, is a human being who was probably abused emotionally, possibly physically. Have you, have you read his, <laughs> you know, his, have you read his niece's book too much? Have and I not read enough? Have which book? It's called, it's titled too much and not enough. And it's written by his niece, Mary Trump. No, I haven't. I, I, so, I heard little, I heard on Colbert, I heard little like snippets. Mm -hmm. So in the summer of 2020, I read that book and uh, she talks about all of what he went through in his childhood. Um, and it is a big explanation on the way things are. Uh, and I, I don't want to go into politics or anything like that, but it's a no, good book. Right. It's a good I'm going to break in out. for just a minute uh, with a, a bit of wisdom from my great grandmother. Uh, my grandma Pounds uh, was uh, a very, a very churchy lady. I come from a very churchy family. And uh, <laughs> yes, yes. And um you know that the church uh, teaches that that you need to love people. You need to love your fellow man, and uh, we're a family of of also very introverted, occasionally misanthropic people. Uh, and I, I remember um, having conversations with my my granny about how like oh how do I love them like ooh. I don't like these people. They're, they're horrible people. I, I don't, how am I supposed to love them? And her response to that was, you don't have to like somebody to love their soul. And I think Ooh. that's what you're getting at, Mr. G, when you're saying that he's still a human being, you know, there is the, you don't have yeah. to like somebody to no. love their soul. No, I, and I'm certainly not, uh, I mean, anyone that knows me, like i know it's a game podcast so i'm trying not to be super political here either uh, i'm not a i'm not a fan of donald trump um but i have lots of family members who voted for him and i have lots of co-workers that you know like and i voted for someone else and they're equally horrified <laughs> by my voting choices mm -hmm. you know but i have this relationship with 
with my coworkers that I've known them. We have a, we love each other. We care about each other. And so I've been able to like really have like these like really hard conversations with my coworkers and say, how do you feel about that? It's so weird to me. Like talking about Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter. I have a lot of like friends uh, who, uh, like one of my, one of the ladies that works in my school, three of her sons are in military or police. And so um, the Black Lives Matter movement was like pretty, um, pretty intense for them, you know, and still is. And there's still, there's still repercussions. Um, and, and then me trying to be a social, I've like laughed at people that I would consider social justice warriors before, um, because it was always, I was always presented with a very extreme person who was like hugging, a, tr literally hugging a tree and saying, don't look at the tree funny or, you know, something ridiculous. And, and, and realizing that I have very much a social justice bent and like I grew up in the church. Um, and I always understood that Jesus was like into loving people and caring for people. And, and so seeing like that, what felt like this really big shift of people that were in the church kind of jumping in with a political candidate who felt like he was promoting a lot of very hateful things was kind of rocked my world um, mm -hmm. to the point yeah. that I no longer attend church. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I haven't thrown out the baby with the bathwater. I know that like that is an instinct of some too, because yeah, I didn't feel like I, I was I've horrible. Had some, I've <laughs> gone through some really similar uh, sh inner struggles, Stephen. I, yeah. I really, um, I, I, there are some family members that I'm just very, very careful about what topics come up mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. I, I want to keep them as, as family members, you know, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. And I understand. I just want to say, like, I, I, I feel that same struggle. Yeah. And, and no, I don't. And I, I think that the danger of the polarization that our the entire world, it feels like, has experienced uh, coming out of, of a very stressful, traumatic, worldwide experience of this pandemic even the even the concept that some people don't even believe that that's it's a thing <laughs> is part of the drama you know what i'm saying like well, like i literally well, have I, had people I, tell I, me I, it's I, the pandemic or the you know the the whatever it's, it's fear it, well, right there's something very important that we're not touching on here and i recognize that we're a gaming show but it's it's, it's... there we have moved from the tech age into the information age in a digital way and misinformation is a huge huge problem the infodemic is the second uh pandemic but the bigger mm -hmm. pandemic that we are fighting and um it's not something that's new you know misinformation was a big contributor to how ebola was handled in south africa for example um or the measles vaccination rollout in that area as well yeah and think think before we speak I, that's a, by so, the way that's a great username uh was mentioning uh the world has always been polarized and i think yeah i agree i mean there's obviously there's been polarization since probably cave times you know well, there's probably been some kind of polarization and i think we're just in a maybe more extreme well i would the, think this so feels like COVID, COVID-19 definitely has sort of unleashed a tsunami of, of information and misinformation onto the world. Yeah. Um, and Rick is right. Uh, there's a lot of fear driving that. And I think people fear what they don't understand. Um, and, or can't fight against. Or fight. And, and they're just trying to cope, really. Mm -hmm. um, because the natural part of human behavior is to try to put a reason and explain something that we can't explain. And, and that's where I see a lot of conspiracy theories being created um, mm -hmm. out of that ether of information. Uh, yeah. And so my point to that is that we're not out of it. We're not oh, even, no. we're, we're not even oh. close to being out of it. We're no. just at the start of it. And we need to make some really big changes, I think, um, on social media platforms like Twitch and how we conduct ourselves on our streaming channels. Um, I think this is a really important conversation to have on the show. Yeah. So I'm glad that you brought it up. Well, what's Thanks. what's I wanted to pop in real quick and and say that it's 
funny because I've been listening to this new podcast called now I, I real quick to kind of background this for a split second. I too also grew up very religious um, and have gone in a different direction, um, but have kind of thrown out the baby with the bathwater kind of. <laughs> um, so yes, <laughs> sorry, Mary. Oh, no. Mary. Um, so I started, but I still love the idea of theology and, and learning about that sort of thing. Where did it come from? And digging in the history. And I found this really cool podcast and it goes back to books that were written far before the main religious scriptures of, of any religion. And what was funny is there's this Greek text by Hesiod, which actually predates, I think it predates the scriptures. And also I think it predates the Iliad and the Odyssey, but Hesiod is this farmer. And the reason it's important apparently is because it's from like a commoner's perspective. It's not some theological or philosophical Greek fellow it's a farmer so it's written as like a very like you know and what's really interesting is back that far back they're like all of this convenience is just ruining morality and, <laughs> and things were better back in the day when you were one with the land and you were out in the wilderness and this was like <laughs> so long ago and they're complaining about the same things that That's we're funny. complaining about and when you go back and you look at this stuff, you're like, it takes away some of that fear because you're like, oh, nothing People ever changes. It's always the same. Everyone's complaining about how back then it was better and all the conveniences ruining the youth of today. Well, the youth of today are going to go on to say all these conveniences are ruining, you know, and it's a and, cycle that keeps going. And yeah, and that's that's why I didn't I don't feel like I disasterized this whole process like i didn't in my mind of like i feel like we're gonna we're gonna get out of it although i will say that in the middle of everything as the the numbers were climbing for deaths I, it was it was scary oh yeah okay so there's there's <laughs> the the difference, circles closing in <laughs> the difference the difference here is technology and the movement of information sure. and, yeah. and the movement of that information is so incredibly rapid that yeah. we see massive swings in social discourse taking over whole communities yeah. in in 24 hours of time so yes. it's it's incredibly aggressive and we we can't stay ahead of it and it is taking lives when we talk about COVID 19 sure. absolutely it is um yeah. so so i think that's yeah. we're, we're 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 sort of moving into almost an information revolution um, over the next 10 years, I think we're going to see a lot more, um, I don't know, polarization well, or ups and downs around that that topic. But Yes, it, uh, people don't change, technology does. It's kind of the thing. And technology changes people. Yeah, but not really, though. I mean, people really haven't been, it hasn't really changed people. It's just allowed people to find other weird, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's just gullible people were going to be gullible like the people that believe this misinformation were going to believe this misinformation depending on who gave it to them it's just the expediency of the of the of the delivery of it is far outpaced what we could have expected or have gullible people possible. gonna gullible people gonna gullible yes <laughs> but yeah. so but, but it, it so impacts anyway. all right i know it impacts all of us uh, in some right if everyone if you have like a large crowd of people that are saying there is no problem, we're not going to vaccinate, we're not going to wear masks or whatever. And I know that's a whole thing, but th that's the hard thing is when it, people feel like they can't trust any source. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because like, you're right. These are not brand new things. Uh, you know, like it, a lot of the games we play deal with the dystopian society where there is a propaganda machine in place uh, that has has misinformed the public and there's a resistance that is fighting against that, you know, uh, knowing the real thing or, or discovering what the real thing is. Um, and and some of that is as total fantasy. I have obviously those mm -hmm. games are total fantasy based on real issues 
I mean, I think some of the things are fantasy, like you have like the QAnon side of things, mm -hmm. which, but I mean, I can tell you that I have people in my family that said stuff to me about, mm. and I was like, because that, that's how the day pervasive it was. The day my mother started talking about 5G and Bill Gates was the day I was like, we need to sit down right now and have a conversation because <laughs> oh this is not. Anyways, can we just hop back here and, and Mr. M Steven, yeah. I want to ask you, how did video games save you? Well, I think so over the break, um, like a lot, of, I really have been, I've been gaming. I've been gaming since I was a kid. Since like almost as long as TRS-80, you know, and uh, it was comforting. It was fun. It was something that was, you know, around as a kid. So like we had the Atari was out and kids were getting new games and we're trying those things. So I was always involved in that. Um, and it, it's really connected me with people like gaming has connected me with people in a really cool way. Like, absolutely. Like I wouldn't be here if not for fallout three, I wouldn't I, be, I wouldn't have done a show every Friday for the last six years with these yabos, if it wasn't for how great they are and it, video games. Exactly. Totally. And you, it just like anything, like you find those people that are golden people, they're gold, you know, some are silver, That's some are gold, brilliant whatever that way to put it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you just, you hold on to them and you do what you can to like, stay in their lives you know like mm -hmm. for me like i had such a great time and i wish i for the longest time because i wasn't i'm not a pc gamer as much as i am a console gamer when i came back to video games fallout 3 i bought the playstation 3 got fallout 3 and uh you know just jumped in right there but that led me to these communities my buddies and my friends, Mama Katie, uh, I, I, I've got uh, ha <laughs> Hazard, I call him. I have my Canadian, uh, my Canadian Fortnite uh, partner um, and uh, Fredster55. I have these group of guys who, and girl, Mama Katie, however anyone identifies. And we, I could go to any, I know that if I drove through their state, they would house me and like, take care of me and feed me has an elder and Fredster. Thank you, Mama Katie. I was like, this is like this, the Emmy Awards, where if I forgot a name, I'd be <laughs> so humiliated. We're just waiting for the boob to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> Boink. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Nip time. No, no, okay. no. All right, We're right, going right, to get right. banned. We're going right, to get banned. All right. All right. All right. So, yeah, no. So I think, I think what saved me is the humans that I was connected to through games. And I think a lot of times we see games, um, people talk about games as um, a, it's kids are disconnecting, you know, like they're going to the game and getting lost. And I, I think that's a thing that can, I believe that also occurs. I believe there are people that go into a game and that's all, and they're not interacting with people. I'm always, I've always been drawn to community. So when I find a good community, I love interacting with them, you know, and, and, and holding on to them and like, even like, Oh, I'll try this other game because my community is trying this game and I want to stay with my community, my, my tribe, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you so, think a lot of that has to do with like maturity? Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I, I feel so. like I've, there, I mean, what you touched on was like addiction yeah. and like, like dopamine like playing a game to just like absorb it all and yeah but but i i agree with you like i play games with rick and Shaleen and a lot of other people because it's community and mm -hmm. i get to know them and know their lives and who they are beyond the games themselves the games are a common interest but these people have taken on a different role for me now other than just people that i play video games with right so yeah i i totally agree like it's it's about community it's a whole reason we do this show it is yeah 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 absolutely was... and, and because we have a common love of games and that's like that's a and i i mean it feels oversimplified but it's absolutely a way to heal some of these divides 
is like finding that that common because we are we are humans so though we will not agree and i'm even i know that you guys don't agree on everything which is half the fun of listening to you talk about things um <laughs> rick the, uh, rick <laughs> um yeah this, what's going on here it's all the hate this, i mean well, we i mean like throw that the is, rick but <laughs> i'm i'm probably the one who argues with him the most yeah that's true <laughs> she does it for fun and 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 that's the but, but because we have that that love of of those things we can meet there at that common ground and and then like step from there and go what's something else we can also agree about you know we don't obviously don't agree about this thing but what about this thing and and slowly like uh, for me i've learned that i'm not going to change the crazy guy on the internet most likely that i tried to interact with very little <laughs> but i'm probably not going to change him but the people that I'm seeing on a daily basis are people that I interact with over time. And we have like an actual relationship of some kind. Like we have a relationship over years of just interacting and, and gaming and, and back and forth through Twitter. And, and, and that's how like, you know, we've grown in a relationship and like just seeing each other do the things we're doing and seeing the growth we each individually are having. Um, and makes it know like that I could even talk about what I'm talking about with you guys mm -hmm. because I'm one, I'm comfortable with you. I know you, you know me. It, I feel it is a safe space. Um, and and I, I'm more and more looking to develop that same feeling of I can have that with almost anybody given enough time to talk. Like even people who I know really have a very different like uh, – political view than I do. Like, uh, like I said, I have coworkers. We're just, just as far apart politically as anyone has ever been, but I, I really don't think we're as far apart as maybe I, I hate saying the mainstream media. Cause it feels like, <laughs> I feel like that's like leveled, like, like yes. all media is wrong. Um, but we're, I think we're a lot closer in a lot of things like in, in the basic, things that we really do agree on how to treat humans and how to care for people. And like, you know, maybe the policies we disagree on and how to achieve that sometimes we disagree on. But I think we agree that like, these are like a lot of these things we think are the same. And I think games are a great way to even enter into some of those conversations about things that are re really important. And I think games are important. I love games and, and games are people's livelihood and, and people make their living doing games. And, and as we play them more, we value even the po process of creation of those games. You know, like even like, how are people treated at this company? What is that? How does that impact how I feel about this? That is important. You know, like that, that I under, like those are things I didn't think about pre pandemic, honestly, very much. I didn't think about that very you much. Should, you should read up about complexity theory. That Ooh. is a whole. That's a rabbit that hole. That sounds like a whole. Yeah, like, it sounds like we're a rabbit not gonna. Yeah. Checking out. Just, <laughs> you should read up about it. Um, I I think that um, we should probably talk about our gameplay. Recognizing we that we're too, a little yeah. short on time. What do you let's, think, Julie? Let's roll on into our gameplay. Um, and uh, let's start with our guest, Stephen. What have you been playing lately? Well, I've been playing Fortnite, which. I, is so uh, generic and everyone's everyone plays it, but um, and everyone doesn't play it because I know not everyone here plays it at all. Nobody uh, here uh, plays it, I, but I yeah. watch it. I really enjoy watching, watching it. it. By the way, I'm a middle school teacher, mm -hmm. and that's how I ended up playing it because I my, one my students were doing the dance. They were doing these random dances, and I'm like, "What is going on? Why are you in my classroom?" One, it's a boy dancing in my classroom, which honestly, there weren't a lot of boys that wanted to dance in public, but they were dancing, and I'm like, "What is happening?" And then I discovered, <laughs> I discovered, is this the, is this the French was dancing Fortnite. pandemic thing? It's just... yeah, no, this was pre-pandemic, and and then well, I'm like, and, you know, the interesting thing about that is that it actually has spilled over into other video games. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. like in Sea of Thieves, there are Fortnite emotes that you mm -hmm. can play with your character, like the crab dab and and oh, whatever. Like that is that's Fortnite influenced in by Fortnite influencing yeah. other games. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they didn't come up with it first, but the the um, the shrinking battle zone, I believe PUBG 
initiated this and now call of duty uses it in their multiplayer mode it's actually really engaging way to get players to play it's hunger games Mm -hmm. it's hunger games it's like where the shield keeps moving in so that the game has to Mm -hmm. end and it keeps it exciting so i i love it It, i'm totally hooked on it it's probably it's my world of warcraft i guess in that i have been hooked in and i love playing it and it has seasons and chapters and it kind of evolves um but it's you can jump in and play like a game for five minutes and then just pop off and not feel like you know like oh man i have so much more i need to do Um, so are you like a legendary character or like how does it work uh, so you don't okay so you don't um you can level up but the leveling up does not make you more powerful it's it's very skill based like a lot of first person shooter games are like i'm not getting like a a better gun there's a lot of skins so a lot of it is and these were all foreign concepts to me before i played it like i wouldn't be like oh i have to buy this new skin for my character like that does nothing for me in the game other than it looks cool you know like this looks cool um and i think that existed in world of warcraft but so i've been playing that um i just bought a game my student will literally every single day said Mr. Giles, have you looked into this game yet? Mr. Giles, like he just wanted me to see this game. It's called A Hat in Time. Um, Uh Oh, Shalene is sold. Oh my God. I do enjoy hats. Do you realize what you've done? I (laughs) Did I just unlock Pandora's hat box? Mm -hmm. Yes, pretty much. Oh, she would love Pandora's hat box. She's already Googling it. So uh, I have ju- I literally just downloaded it like yesterday. So I haven't even opened it yet. So this weekend I was going to dive in and then go report back to my student about it. Nice. Um, it sounds like a really fun game. I don't know anything other than his recommendation. I saw a lot of reviews that said it was really good. Um, and I'm listening to what you guys say and see what other game I should get. Lovely. Sea of Thieves. Thank sea you of thieves. so much. Sea of Thieves. Sea of thieves. Yeah, written down. Rick, why don't you tell us about New World? Okay, so yeah, I didn't think I would like this game at all because of just, I don't like grindy things. I don't like feeling pressured to play the game, et cetera, et cetera. Um, But I got really bored with everything that I was playing and I just didn't know what to play. My wife had kind of mentioned that I should play New World because she'd been playing it. So At the worst case scenario, it was an excuse to buy another game. So I did. Bought it, downloaded it, booted it up. I made my character. His name is uh, actually, actually, due to the book series you've you've gotten me into, I've named him after a city. Oh, really? So his name is is Dahlgren. Oh, nice. So I I really like the name Dahlgren Fen. And I what I decided to do a musketeer build because so I was looking up on the, I was looking up on the Wikipedias that um, at, at the different weapons and you can get like a war hammer or a great axe or a hatchet and a sword and a shield very typical things um, and I was looking at the musket because I, I really like muskets I just love the mechanical like fire and then you have to like reload and and they're powerful because they're kind of one shot hit you know can cannons kind of thing so I really like the idea of an MMO where it lets you kind of aim and shoot your skill base your your you know skill in shooting is required in this mmo it's not like guild wars where guild wars you just kind of even if it's a gun you click a button and it still kind of auto locks as long as you have the guy targeted kind of thing and um so it's like that that sounded intriguing to me along with the combat is very elder scrollsy oriented you have to like parry and and dodge and do other things to kind of you know, combat flanking is is important. If you get around behind the character, it does critical damage. If you get them from the side or behind, so like there's strategy in how you fight. So like that kind of made me excited. So when I was looking at this, I was like, okay, the the musket uses these stats. What other weapons use the, these stats? Because you know that's one hand. Obviously, you're going to have another weapon. So I need a secondary weapon. It'd be cool to have a sword. You know, so are there any swords? Like, oh, rapier. A rapier is uses the same stats as a musket. So I'm a musketeer. I have a rapier and a musket. Oh, no, Great. no, no, no. <laughs> and, and so that's I terrible. bought the game. I, I started. Huh? <laughs> uh, so I bought the game and I, I loaded in. I got into the thing. The story starts and you're, you're on this ship 
and the ship is sailing to this magic island and is you're getting to the island the storm erupts and the ship crashes and you're you're marooned on this on this uh on this island and everyone there who is not an actual player like npc there's a few npcs sprinkled around that are like the townsfolk and stuff and and then there's you know bad guys and wolves and you know turkeys and rabbits and so anyway you i get you know i finally get my musket my rapier and i'm just running around shooting and you know stabbing things and it is a lot of fun uh sex bacon i will let you know what server i'm on i don't know off the top of my head so i started off in this place called windsward and it's there's a beachy rocky area with a bunch of shipwrecks and there's like forests and you know some mines it's really nice and pretty and um and as I'm playing the game, I get to the point where I have to choose or I can choose one of three factions. Well, I didn't, you know, for a while. And then I noticed that the area of Windsward was taken by the Covenant. The Covenant's like the church. It's easy to think of the Covenant as the church. Syndicate is like the truth seekers, magic, kind of the history. And the Marauders are like piratey, mercenary kind of people. And those are the three, sir. Those are the three factions. And depending on who owns the territory they can jurisdict taxes on the people that use the the things inside the town so if you buy a home you can buy homes and like there's a ton of homes in in this place that you can decorate and furnish and apparently whoever has the highest home score like if players buy the same home whoever decorates it the best, that house is like on display for everyone to see. And you can just walk around their house and it's just, it's just there. It looks like a house, like the cities look lived in. And um, so, but, and as you craft, you have to pay taxes for crafting. It's like a minimal amount, but I ended up becoming the syndicate and I was running around Windsward for a really long time, realizing that I was paying plus 5% tax on everything I was doing to the covenant it was going into the coffers of a faction that was my enemy and i didn't realize that so i i walked up to this other place called um everfall and oh my gosh it is like fall all the time it is beautiful these obelisks around these mountains and like just it, it just it is a really gorgeous looking game and so i was like man i really like everfall and it's syndicate controlled i picked syndicate i forgot to mention and um you know, so it's like, this is really cool. I'm paying like no taxes at all and, and whatnot. And, and so last night I was just doing the thing doing, I was doing faction quests, PVE faction quests. Cause I don't touch PVP. I was doing PVE faction quests, like clearing out bad guys, hunting, earning rep in the, in for the syndicate and whatnot. And at that point, the syndicate controlled two territories out of the entire big map. And the Marauders controlled two other territories. And the Covenant, which was directly south in Windsward, controlled just Windsward territory. So we had declared war. The syndicate declared war on Windsward. And that's fine. Hopefully we win. They're actually, they should be done the battle now. It started at eight o'clock tonight. So I don't know who won yet, but if they win and we took Windsward, that means you're, my, you're so addicted. That means <laughs> I was going to say, my, this is some, yeah. you're now rearranging your life schedule to get it's political. <laughs> well, I really think their war fashion works out. They pick 50 people. Like you have to sign up to go to war and they pick 50 people. Um, whoever's like controls that area. So I think back alley mafia controls, um, <laughs> ever fall and they declared war on the covenant faction so they picked the 50 people and then they go fight and if they win they take over windsward the syndicate would control windsward and then i would get access to my storage in windsward because right now i don't have access to that um so anyway um <laughs> i was playing last night PV pve and all of a sudden i see bastion everfall is under attack and i pull up the map and our fort was under attack it's like well that's strange who's attacking us We'd already declared war on Windsward, and and I was a little confused as to who's attacking us. And I looked, and the Marauders were attacking our fort, and they took it. So uh, the entire chat lit up with anyone who is in the syndicate, help us retake the fort. I'm like, you know what? I'm a low level 15. Let's let's just do it. Went into town, turned on PVP, and was running up towards the fort and got absolutely ganked <laughs> by like high level marauders. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna be a disaster. So I respawned back in, 
And by the time I made it up to the fort again, we had already gotten inside the fort. And when I had walked in, the marauders were kind of up on the ramparts and in the middle controlling the control point of the fort. And we had come in from the left and the right. And I was throwing in like spike bombs and setting traps and shooting with my musket. And and the fun part is it doesn't actually tell you if you did anything. Like it, it, after the battle was over, we took the fort back. Um, it didn't tell me if I killed anyone. It didn't tell me if I hit anybody. It was just like, I felt like I was a part of it because I was there, you know, but I don't know how integral I was, but so we took the fort and we were capturing it and they kept counterattacking and eventually they, they lost the fort, but their influence bar was up to 84%. If they had hundred percent, they could declare war on our territory of Everfall. And we were like, that cannot happen. And I, I felt because I had put so much time into working and upgrading my, everfall level of like you know perks of while i'm in everfall i get these special perks i was like defending my land against these marauders man this is my territory and so afterwards um i got an, I, I joined a company called some buddies and there's like 30 people in that particular company because even though we're part of the syndicate there are different companies that work together made up of just players with their own like governors and, you know, council members and each one has their own set of perks that they can do. And there's gold in order to uh, build up the fort with siege weaponry. You have to like, you know, do certain things with your companies and then you're able to, it's very community driven PVP, uh, very stri strategic, you know what I mean? Um, and so I joined this company and we started doing PVP quests inside of Everfall to lower the influence. So it was like, one of them was like going and doing resource, just, you know, gathering resources. We would run up and we would mine ore. So that way the, yeah, we would mine ore. So the Marauders couldn't get it. And what's really cool about the game is if you're doing PVP missions, the Marauders or whoever's doing PVP missions in your territory they're going to be pushed towards the same place. So if I'm trying to mine the ore, so are the marauders pointed to the same ore. If I'm trying to gather intel for my team, the marauders are trying to steal that intel. So the chances of like meeting up with enemies is, is very high. So while you're out doing these PVP missions to lower their influence, they can't declare war on you. They're also trying to stop you from doing that. And we eventually just defeated the marauders so quickly in our territory and push them out where they all stopped flagging for PVP. And what was really funny was there was like no syndicate activity. This was, this is what was really crazy. Everyone was kind of doing their own thing before they took the fort. There was no fighting. There's no skirmishes. Nobody was flagged for PVP. The fort pops up that it's under attack. The syndicate asked for help and the townsfolk <laughs> just like, rallied and destroyed so the invaders cool. and and there were skirmish you'd run around you hear people screaming and gunshots off in the distance and then after they lost influence the skirmishes went away and everything went back to peaceful again and everybody turned off pvp and that was <laughs> it and um one of the things that really got me was when i was running around hearing the uh, hearing gunfights and skirmishes in the distance really sounded good I was like, why does that sound so good? The gunshots just ring out through like the canyons and you hear people scream and it sounds visceral. I'm like, what, why does it sound so good? And I was talking to my wife about that. And she's like, didn't you see the video I sent you? I said, no. And she's like, I sent you a video on how they did the sound for this Ooh. game. And they did not touch a, a library. They recorded everything from scratch. Wow. They went out with yeah. picks and hit rocks with picks and recorded that and shot muskets at different distances and things yeah and oh the gosh. rain wow. the rain sounds different depending on the armor if it's metal if it's leather if you're oh in a tent God. if you're outside if you're in a tent with holes like they went so in depth with the sound of this game and i'm like that's why it sounds so crazy when you hear someone scream like there's been times i've heard like a player scream and i'll turn and look and they're fighting something and i'll, I'll help out but just the way that they did it was such a cool way, but I have never been a part of a PVP community instance like that, where it was just like, everybody rally, we need help. And I'm like, I'll be there with my musket, you know? And, <laughs> and, and that's, that's what I said in the chat too. I was like, I have a musket for any company that will need me. And that's when the somebodies are like, come on in. And, um, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, there's been drama already. I logged in tonight and the uh, 
Covenant has declared war. Well, they haven't declared war. They've they built up the influence bar by 100%, so they can declare war on us if they want to. And as soon as the battle started at 8 o'clock tonight, the Marauders took our fort back because all of our high-level characters were fighting the war in the south. So I'm really You'll curious to see. So let me one front so, spread out. So I just have one question for you, Rick. Yeah. When's the last time that you slept? <laughs> last night. Um, it's it. You know, the, there's a lot of resource gathering, but it doesn't feel grindy. And I'm not quite sure why that is. I'm not. It sounds I'm not, like they put a lot of care into it. I mean, really I, nice. man, I, when when they put like that kind of care into it, when you start playing, and how's the how's the user interface and the control? I mean, is it just like it's great? Is it feels good to play like it, the technical side of it? Like, yeah, I, I love that about the Dark Souls games. Um, the the atmosphere of the games and the sound of every like every step felt like it was important. Like every mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I love when a game does that right, you know, yeah. like to me, musicians and like sound, like sometimes that gets like they go oh, like yeah. they, with a sound library, they use something, mm -hmm. you know, we're using the same Wilhelm scream. Yes. <laughs> Although that is always pretty great. I think nice that would be the classic, egg. The classic creaking that door. Would, yeah. 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 Well, you know, and I was thinking about this just now, the inventory system is set up in such a way where it's like, this is for smithing. This is for that. This is for this. So you know what to put in your inventory. You know what to do with... You don't pick up something and you're like, do I need this? Do I need to save it? Like, you can fish. You'll Everything that you catch, salvage it. You just salvage it for parts because you need it to cook. You can't do anything with the fish. You just salvage it. Well, I have all this timber. What do I do with it? Well, you either turn it into charcoal or turn it into timber. Like, you don't have to guess, like what do I need to do with this? And then if you turn it into something, you're like, oh, I didn't mean to make all this steel ingot out of iron ingot. Well, you can revert it back to iron. Like, like they've really made it comfortable. And because you know how that happens in Fallout, you pick something up, you're like, I don't know if I need this. I'll just put it in this bag. I don't know if I need that. I'll put it in this bag. And then you end up with this giant Santa sack of junk <laughs> that is just stuff for later that you're not quite sure of and then you find out you never needed it to begin I'm with. I'm a hoarder. Yeah. I'm a hoarder. It, this <laughs> game like gives you ample storage space that you can continuously upgrade for free. You know, and, and it it's just you put stuff in your storage and when you have to craft, it pulls it from your storage. You don't have to have it on you. Like it's they put so much thought and effort into the ease of access mixed with working to unlock the next thing in such a way where it doesn't feel like you have to grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. The other thing that they don't do is there's no seasons yet. There's no like, you know, level up your, this other thing to unlock these skins. You know, there's very little, you know, there's some skins you can buy with in-game currency, um, but that's not really pushed. You know, there's the, it, it doesn't, there's no, you know, the, even the deluxe edition was just skins. It didn't come with any DLC passes, no season passes. They're like, nah, it's just some skins. So I didn't feel bad for not spending $70 on a game just for some extra skins that I didn't want, mm -hmm. you know, and it's 40 bucks. And I think they did a really good job. I mean, it's an MMO where I get to lay down in a bush and ambush somebody like, what other MMO do you get to lay down in bushes and crawl around and, and ambush them with muskets? It just doesn't really, you know, it, it's just fun. It's just, you know, it, it, they did such a good job with it. But I was so pumped up after my battle last night of, of doing PvP and getting killed and killing other people and not losing anything, just time to having to walk back to the battleground. Well, now um, I really want to check this yeah. game out, actually. It's not <laughs> it's for everybody. Not really cool. But it worked for me. I don't know. It was it was a lot of fun. It still is a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much what I've been playing all week if I haven't been cutting records. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks for sharing, Rick. That sounds pretty neat. Thunder, what have you been playing? I haven't been playing much of anything. Um, I'm rebuilding my stream setup at home, combining my workspace with my stream setup. And so... My PC is next to me, but it's a pile of cables and keyboards. So um, 
And uh, yeah, now it's going to be down for even longer because I got to wait for an audio mixer to come in. So that sucks. I mean, I can still actually no, no, I won't have. Well, I could use the classic video card audio, which is bleh. but um, yeah, that's uh, I've actually been stream. I've been playing some stream raiders. Do you guys have you guys heard of stream raiders? Mm -hmm. Not familiar mm -hmm. with that. Uh, it's so stupid. And I, I'm like. I don't even know why I play it, but I'm so addicted. <laughs> Stream Raiders is an on-stream, like, battle game that you can play as part of watching somebody stream. And it's a third-party web application. Uh, so you open up the the battleground in a, in a separate window while you're watching somebody stream. And then you can place certain units and warriors and archers and mages and whatever around the battleground strategically and then you get a certain amount of kills and a certain amount of assists each match and you can do campaigns together while somebody streams for several hours anyways because i've just been working and haven't had any access to any true non-junk foodie type game content um i've been just playing stream raiders and it's it's now consumed my entire work day. <laughs> um, not in the sense that I'm not getting any work done, but I have it on in the background. <laughs> and every five minutes, it does this and it gives you a little notification to go and place another unit on the battlefield. <laughs> and you can place up to six units on a battlefield in a 30 minute span. 30 <laughs> minutes is how long it takes to build a battle. And it's ridiculous. It's so stupid. I don't even know why I play it. I play it to get points so I can buy stupid, pointless skins that I don't care about just so that I can build better characters. And it's just, <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. I don't even know I'm talking about it right now. I mean, that's half the things I, I purchased yeah. in Fortnite. We, we definitely. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's like, I, I really sort of, oh, it just went up burner. I got to go put my units on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting nice. some really good stream? Like, is the quality of the stream give you better characters? No, um, no. So that, no, so, is... so basically like I, you can play it without having to watch somebody else's stream. So if you go to stream Raiders, um, dot com, you can just join other people's raids off their stream and then they pl do the battle and stuff so it's really cute the characters are really cute you can get like cats that shoot rainbows and stuff Aww. Yeah. Rainbow it's, it's so stupid um anyways yeah that i don't i, I don't want to spend any more time talking about that i think that horse is dead and beaten so <laughs> oh, i genuinely thought you i genuinely thought you were gonna say that horse has sailed <laughs> <laughs> that horse has sailed that's great. That's good. That That's should great. become a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I of course, am, am still playing Fallout 76, like, all the mm -hmm. time, uh, because homework. Uh, Got to get that homework done every day. Um, but I, I logged on a couple of days ago, and, of course, I always play with Archon. Um, it's, it's our routine. We get home from work, grab some dinner, hop on and do homework together. And... Uh, and Archon uh, logs on and he tells me, yeah, I, I set up a meeting with the plan collector. And he says this like I should know what he what he meant, meant by it. Uh, and I didn't, of course. So I asked for more information. And he tells me that uh, this is a character from the plan collector discord. So this is like the seedy underbelly of this spreadsheet uh, that he got me started on with the, the trying to collect all the plans and mods and stuff for Fallout 76. Um, he's part of this Discord group of, of people that are like him. Um, and and with the, the seeking for all people the People that are like him. Yes. <laughs> yes. People that are equally as interested in, in collecting all these plans and stuff. And this plan collector character guy has in his inventory, all of the available plans. So the idea is you open a trade menu with the guy and then you can scroll down and take screenshots of anything that you do not know. So then you know for sure what you do and do not know 
from from the plans. And uh, so he explains this to me and he says, I talked to him. He said, you can you can participate as well. You know, like and I'm like, oh, OK. So immediately I'm thinking like, OK, I can't embarrass Archon in front of his friends. <laughs> 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 and as I, in, as in like as in like being being like oh look at this hat <laughs> and I, I look over and Archon has changed out of his mistress of mystery dress and into oh. a serious looking military attire of course yes. of course yes Such and, a I'm, dude. and I'm like did you just change for the plan collector guys like maybe <laughs> drag in this drag in the sheets major in the streets <laughs> So, so yeah, and then I, I start immediately wondering, like, oh, gosh, what am I wearing? Like, I, I don't want to embarrass him in front of his friends. Oh, my. So, it's, I, like you're go it's like you're getting approved for a mortgage or something. Yes. <laughs> I, I felt like, like this was, like, um, you know how people, yeah. people get accepted and you have to apply for acceptance into elite clubs, you know, yeah. like, and, and then you're part of the club. Uh, I yeah. felt like that's what was happening here. So, and it also had these hints of like drug deal happening. So, like I also kind of felt like I was I was participating in a drug deal. Um, but yeah, it was great. The plant collector guy was super nice. Uh, we got to to scroll down. He's only lacking like a dozen plans uh, oh of the gosh. trade plans. It's ridiculous. It's it's crazy. Um, I had about 12 pages of, of <laughs> unknown plants. Um, but yeah, that was that was probably the most interesting thing that happened in Fallout 76 this week. Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention is, um, is the xboxachievements.com website. So this is a website I've used for ages um, for the occasional achievement guide if I run up to something that I'm really struggling with. And it also has checklists, so um, you can keep a little checklist of, of the achievements that you've gotten and the ones you haven't unlocked. And they've updated this website so that you no longer have to manually uh, keep your checklists. It, you just sign in with your Xbox account and it, it tracks them for you. And Ooh. I love that. It's really fun. So, Magic tracks. Yes. If that's something you're interested in, you can check that out. Um, been reading a lot of books. Um, more than more than video games lately. Just reading lots of books. Um, I've also been listening to an audio book. I've been uh, listening to Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which is actually um, it's narrated by Kate Mulgrew, <laughs> aka Captain Janeway, and wow. she is such a good audiobook narrator. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. So um, we may be the only podcast. Uh, on this platform that does not have an Audible sponsorship, but I still recommend going to Audible and checking out Nosferatu. Hear that Jono. Audible? Uh, we like to uh, <laughs> yeah, listen to our voices. Yes. It's really good voices for Audible. <laughs> there we go. I think we're going to get it now. Yes. Uh, there's a bump that happens whenever I, I'm an influencer, as we of know. Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> and just by like saying things sometimes, stuff just happens. Wow, just manifesting say a thing. that into existence. Well, it's like it's like it's like when we the talk secret. about it's like when we talk about the extensive shipping costs on the Bethesda store, and then the next week they announce that they're changing the shipping costs. Coincidence? I think not. Mm. I can't. Think not. One of the things that I say is a reference to a movie that I have forgotten what movie it's from, and nobody else gets it, but it's always think it and be it man and i do not remember what the heck that was from but was... there you go is that alec baldwin no actually i think always it's a henry, i think it's always a henry be Rollins closing spoken word reference mm. to something yeah. that he referenced it's a reference oh. to a reference it's a it's a it's a cover reference is really what it it's is. it's a cover reference <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um. i'm thinking glenn glenn gary Clint, glenn what what's that movie Glenn Gary Glenn. Okay. Always be. Uh, well, um, Glenn Ross. Books. Books, yeah. I like them. What book um, are you reading? Other book. Well, let's see. What else am I reading? I guess that's all I'm reading right now. Uh, I just recently finished a book called 
Kingdom of Ash, which was the last in a seven or eight book series. Um, it's like a fantasy novel series. Um, it, w- it was really good. I really liked it. I got really attached to all the characters. Now the series is over and, and I have this empty feeling inside. <sighs> Bad when you finish a series. I hate it. It's the worst. That's why you should never finish a series. <laughs> and um, I also wanted to mention that I I recently was given a code for Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, which is like the enhanced version of Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh Lord. And I don't know if you guys remember my talking about this a few a few years ago. I played the original version, which was free on Steam. And Mm -hmm. Doki Doki Literature Club is, it's a visual novel. And it starts off feeling like a dating sim. And it's the kind of game that it's really better if the less you'd know about it going in. Uh, I will say there is a content trigger warning at the beginning of this game. And you should take that warning very, very seriously. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Yes. This game was an experience that I cannot compare to anything else, Doki Doki Literature Club. And it was maybe one of the only games I've ever played that the the platform of playing it on the PC was highly significant to the experience. It was very important that I was playing it on PC. Now I got to try this game. And they've not, you should try it. You should try it. It's, it's, it's worth, it's, it's only a couple of hours, the original. Um, the plus enhanced version includes some new storylines, some new side stories, and uh, it's also available on console. Hmm. And I don't know how that's going to work. Those of you out there who have played Doki Doki Literature Club know what I'm saying when I say I have no idea how this is going to be made to work on a console. Um, so I'm going to check this out on Xbox and, uh, and get achievements and, uh, and see how this works because I'm really, really interested to see what they've retooled to make it work on console. So looking cool. forward to that. That's, yeah, that's my awesome. gameplay. Ooh. We do have a couple of emails. It's been so long since we've had emails and I'm really excited about it. Uh, Rick, nice. do you want to read this first one? Yeah. Hey gang. Long time listener, but first time emailing. So let me start off with some praise. Y'all deserve it. This show is the highlight of my work week. Every time I get to the Spotify notification that a new episode is up, my mood instantly perks up. That being said, the last TFS episode was a bittersweet one. While I understand why you are ending it for now, listening to your outro this last time was hard. Fallout has always had a special place in my heart. I remember the first time playing it. My little brother handed me his copy of Fallout 3 and told me I had to check it out. He knew my love for 50s music and aesthetic, and just like that, I was hooked. I hadn't played any games up until that point in a long time, and Fallout reignited my love for video games. So while I am sad that TFS is on hiatus, I am also glad that it has led me to your other podcast, GameStack, which I equally love. You you guys are so relatable, humble, and knowledgeable beyond just games. I feel like I finally found my tribe. So thank you for that and all your hard work. We appreciate you and the community that you've built. Much love, fire and gasoline. Humble? Who's humble? I'm not humble. I'm great. Take back. Take that. that. (laughs) Fire and gasoline is very active in the Discord. I, I enjoy them. Uh, that have... is that is what makes it all worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That and the money they sent as an attachment. Rick, <laughs> Speed coin is rolling. He's just in. he's just trying not to be humble. So we we do have a second email. Uh, Vendor, do you want to take this one, or or would you rather? Sure. Okay. Yep. You can go ahead. Oh, just hold on. I got to place a unit. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, okay. So first off thank you all for coming up with an awesome follow-up podcast your banter and friendship is fluid and it's like hanging out with friends when i listen when it comes to fallout it really changed everything i felt about video games i played both fallout 1 and 2 on my mac when they got ported in 2001 ish and same with 2 uh the story writing was awesome and the world they created was both dark and hopeful at the same time After the announcement of three, I was both worried and excited. How could they go away from the isometric view? But to my surprise, it was an awesome game and where I really fell in love with 
this open world thing mind blowing. New Vegas had well written quests and most of the time you actually cared about the characters you met. Four came out and the graphics really impressed me and learning that you could build settlements uh, got me even more excited. It was like combing my favorite uh, games, the fallout I was used to and SimCity combining. I think they meant to say combining there. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that 76 is a game I love, but I really like being able to play in a fallout world with friends. I'll keep mm -hmm. my fingers crossed that whatever fallout five ever comes out, I hold on to hope it's full of great relatable characters and they keep the building aspect in it. Thanks again for a great podcast. And don't, uh, I don't have to, and I don't have to worry about missing you guys because I already listened to your other show, GameStack. Uh, and that was Grey Ghost 29. So thank you, Grey Ghost. Grey Ghost. And you have some great yeah. listeners. You have you have guys who have built something special. You have the best listeners. Honestly, it's so cool. It's, well, I mean, we were talking about this last week and the week before and the week before that. And we're going to Discord... keep talking about it as long as, as long as the people keep listening. Yep. Why do you keep listening? That's the question. Because right? <laughs> we're awesome. But like our Discord community, that's us. the first thing that I pull up in the morning. It's like coffee, Discord. Who posted stupid stuff while I was sleeping? <laughs> How can I ruin Gift Wars today? For yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, although there are more bold folks in the Gift Wars that tread where I dare not trod. I love our Broad Discord community. They're so silly. I don't know which which direction that was supposed to go in. Anyway. Well, guys, I think that's a show. That's a show. We did it. Uh, this was a long one. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have anything you want to plug before we close out? Steven? Yeah. If uh, two things. Uh, the new Fork Knife album, for the, because the video game, anyone that's into the video games, if you just look up songs in the key of Fallout, songs in the key of Minecraft, songs in the key of Fork Knife, we did that on purpose. We didn't want to be sued by Fortnite. Um, oh, I get it. That's why we did it. And a lot of people that play it, we call it Fork Knife just mm -hmm. because it's funny. And you can use the Fork Knife emoji to let someone know you want to play. Um, uh, and if you would go to stevenwesleygiles.com, um, and maybe that'll be posted in the show notes or what whatnot. Uh, but I am. I have a new album that's I'm going to be working on in November. I actually am doing. I'm starting a Kickstarter, and this is the first time I've really said anything about it. Uh, oh, it's in exclusive! This is yeah, GC, this is an exclusive. Game stack exclusive. Yeah, and this is uh, something I'm very excited about because it is taking my love of video games and my spiritual longing, discontent all the things that happened during the pandemic and a whole bunch of other things and kind of has it in one under one roof, which is really interesting and different and weird and exciting for me. So um, you can sign up for a mailing list if you want. And I would love to give you, uh, if you do that, I would love to send you a code uh, for the album. You can just reach out to me. I'm on Mr. G fun on Twitter and, um, and anywhere fine, social medias are sold you can find me lovely right thank you so much uh we Thanks also we me. also thank you for joining us it was wonderful yes um, it was so nice we also want to thank our sponsor one last time oak and crow coffee visit oakandcrow.com to buy a bag of we just love coffee two dollars from your purchase will will benefit the children's miracle network you can email us just like Fire and Gasoline and Grey Ghost 29 did. You can email us at info at wejustlovegames.com. Info at wejustlovegames.com. I really love getting your emails and it genuinely brought me a lot of joy that we had a couple this week. Um, find us on Twitter. Our lovely guest is at Mr. G Fun. The show is We Just Love Games. I am Shaleen L. Rick is Rick McVick, and Vendertron is Vendertron N. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash we just love games and the group at facebook.com slash groups slash we just love games. Join the Discord and uh, you can join us for the live recording at 6 30 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 30 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash we just love games. We also do um, the occasional Twitch stream now and again. 
uh, we're planning to boot up some Life is Strange, Fender and I. Um, Life is Strange True Colors sometime. We haven't picked a date yet. And uh, Back for Blood is is going to be the return of uh, of Survival Horror Sundays with uh, with myself and Rick and Archon. So that'll be good times. Soon. Uh, we're on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio. Like, subscribe, and review the show on your platform of choice. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, as we close out today, I would like to to end by playing one of the songs from the Key of Fork Knife album. Uh, yes. Yes, by, by Katie and, and, and Steven. And this is going to be fantastic. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this particular song? It's called Reboot Friends. Oh, sure. Yeah. Reboot Friends. So in the game, you have this, the ability when someone is killed by another player that they have a little card that appears. And if you can get to the card and grab it, there's these reboot vans all over the island and you can reboot your friends so that they don't have to sit out the whole game. You can bring them back, which is actually really cool too because it gives you another player that you're you're kind of questing with and so you know uh it's very poppy it's so fun this album it goes all over the place there's like a hardcore punk and this is super poppy and uh mama katie i think really produced the heck out of this one uh yeah reboot friends so and it, and it, there's a lot of inside fork knife Fortnite humor um but there are some songs that are universal too so reboot your friends who are in need of some love. How Lovely. about that? You could use that as a metaphor for those of you that don't play Fortnite. Let's check it out. <laughs> reboot friends, reboot each other. Bye. Stuck. Yeah.